What's up, guys? What's going on? Welcome back to Nerd Theory. I think I gotta fix the intro, man. There's like too much of a long pause on the end there with the black screen. Oh, okay, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah, we we were Josh and I were having a good discussion off air as we were just about to go on air, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just hit the the live button, and it, lo and behold, it's time anyway. So yeah, just continue whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, we were kind of talking, guys, and uh, I think most of you, especially those that follow theory pretty closely or follow myself pretty closely, kind of understand uh, that just Star Wars comes with a whole bunch of things, and sometimes. Uh, it can get really frustrating and it's a lot to cover Star Wars. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. And uh, so we were just talking, man, about just some of the the different things that we have both dealt with as far as with the fandom and the platform and the different things. And and, and I think ultimately where where we were t where we were in the combo was like, you know, First of all, you and I didn't really put a wedge into the Star Wars fan base. You know, uh, that wedge, I believe, belongs to Lucasfilm. I think Lucasfilm created that wedge. I think a lot of other people, uh, including, you know, some of like the fandom menace type people, you know, ha hammered on that wedge and they did it in ways that I didn't agree with. But ultimately, that wedge was not put there even by those fandom menace people. And I frankly believe that if disney had done a better job there would have been less for even the retractors to sort of get angry about and cause all this kerfuffle about and frankly like when it comes to you and me man it's just so frustrating because i, I get it all the time i know you get it all the time it's ne it feels like it's never good enough it feels like despite you and i <clears throat> taking the platform very seriously despite us trying to censor some of the things we say you know, even take our opinions and, and sort of water them down a little bit, despite all of that in, you know, small ways, it still doesn't feel like we get any appreciation for that. And, and because Star Wars is a little crazy, it just seems like you and I tend to get, I mean, frankly, attacked and, and uh, you know, treated really weirdly by people uh, in the Star Wars community. And I, I just kind of wanted to talk about it. I feel like it's a weird part of our lives you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's definitely it's weird but i think it's something that just comes with the trade of you know being on the internet and being you know a public figure it's yeah. just how it works um i think if you have a presence and you have you know you amass a following people are going to start to hold you in a certain light based on your subscription number and um unfortunately they don't you know that just kind of the whole idea of what people don't understand is that when you start out uh you have zero subs Usually, you're still the same person regardless of the amount of subs. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, there's a certain um, uh, responsibility or something that people want to uphold you to yeah. when you have a certain amount of subscribers. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, I think the thing also is like uh, their version of that or like their purity test of that is like so different than like what it actually is when you're in it. Because like, frankly, like, look, you and I both pride ourselves on uh, speaking our mind. Right. And we don't always see eye to eye. You and I have had clashes on yeah. air, off air, but like, I respect your gumption and I respect your, you know, ability to put your opinion out there. I've never considered you a toxic person or like putting stuff out there for, for any kind of like, you know, like, reason you know other than the fact that that's how you feel you know what i mean right. and i'm i feel the same way but i do feel like i do try to to maybe not say things as harshly as i could or perhaps be a little bit more open about this one thing because i understand that's just different when i say things compared to like somebody in the comment section or something like that right but again it's just not good enough it feels like their version of that it's like people want you to be the soldier for a certain thing within Star Wars. And if that one thing were to win the day of whatever this fan war is, then people would feel really satisfied. And it, it feels like because you and I sort of refuse to play that game, we sort of get attacked a little bit by both sides. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty weird, but it is what it is. Today we're going to talk about Lego Star Wars. Uh, it's been delayed once again, and... Um... This is now, I think, the second delay that we've had in it, and it's kind of upsetting. Yeah, uh, not kind of. It is upsetting because I was looking forward to playing this game back in the fall when it was supposed to originally come out. Yep. And then it was pushed to spring, and then now that it's spring, they're just like, "Yo," um, and I have it right here. 
They say all of us at TT Games working hard to make Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga the biggest and best Lego game ever, but we're going to need more time to do it. We won't be able to take make our intended spring release date, but we'll provide updated launch timing as soon as possible. Yeah, man. People ouch. are but yeah, it's pretty ouch. And frankly, like people are upset. You know, I was looking at Twitter. Yeah, of I, course. I, I dude, I, it's crazy. Like I love um just kind of getting a vibe for where the community is at. And look, Twitter can be super toxic, but at the same time, these are what legit real people, you know, are saying. Um, yeah. And like, if you read in this, I mean, this guy right here is like, this is insane. I pre-ordered this game in November of last year and it's stupid. You guys can't make spring 2021. I bet you say holiday 2021 and then delay again into 2022. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't say release dates. You can't do how hard is it to make a Lego game? Uh, I don't believe you're actually making the game. Uh, you know, and even people that are being like reasonable, um, like people are saying, you know, like for instance, can't help, uh, can hope then management isn't pushed on realistic deadlines. Uh, but the statement earlier in the year would have been nice. So like, that's the nice version of it. You know what I mean? Is like, yeah. dude, like there's been nothing like they've told us nothing. You know what I mean? And it's been sort of radio silence. And I guess the question is this. Is this just a delay because of Rona, because of the situation in the world, you know, just crunch and just in general? Could or be. could it could definitely be. Or is this because of things going on at Lucasfilm? Is this yet again a victim of tinkering behind the scenes? Lucasfilm wanting the Skywalker Saga Lego game to have the right imaging to not have any jokes that might you know crap on the sequels or awesome. whatever yeah. yeah so i mean the fact that there's been radio silence the fact that we know things are going on at lucasfilm you know i just heard that pedro signed some kind of massive contract he has first look deals out the wazoo meaning very i mean it could still happen but it just seems weird that if they're going to roll right into mando and stuff with pedro that he would be signing all these things i mean i think that there's been enough friction and confusion at this point that you know a little answer or a little more openness would really go a long way is this just a lego game sure but it's kind of not just a Lego game. It's the Skywalker Saga Lego game that happened after you closed out the Skywalker Saga. And I've been trying to put Band-Aids in, in, in your fingers in the friggin' dam as leaks come out the entire time. So it's just another really disappointing thing as Star Wars fans, man. I don't know how many more of these announcements we can take. Yeah. Who knows? I'm trying to. People are saying my uh, webcam is fuzzy. So I'm just trying to fix it. Oh man, really? Maybe I maybe I came in and sucked up all the internet. <laughs> no one wants a rush game title. I completely agree with that, Jonathan. Nobody wants a rush game title. Um, and you're right. And it's you know, it's like Kajama or Kojima said, uh, a rush game is always bad, but a delayed game has the opportunity to be good or something like that. Like for sure, man. I totally get it. But I think that the lack of explanation, the lack of transparency, like, I don't know. To me, this is uh, this is not a good look, man. Death by a thousand cuts is what's going on with Star Wars right now. Is my autofocus not working? Anyway, that's kind of where I'm at with it. And uh, yeah, so twice the hype, double the disappointment. <laughs> Says Zaba. Yeah, nice. Nice. I mean, I don't know. You guys let me know. You know what I mean? I know Theory's trying to get this figured out. Let me know in the chat and I'll peek at it. Like, let me just ask this. On a scale from 1 to 10, how disappointed are you in this news? On a scale from 1 to 10, let us know. Because maybe most of you out there are not. Maybe a lot of you are like, I don't care. It's just a Lego game. But I'm willing to bet there are many, many of you, especially if I was a sequel fan. Like, let me just rant a little bit because I know he's he's figuring his stuff out. So let me just rant just a little bit here. If I were a sequel fan, I think I would be the most upset about this because it feels like another we're not going to fully admit that this didn't work and we're going in a different direction because we don't want to lose the small amount of people that liked this. But we're also not going to give you what you want and show that we actually care about this. It feels like a weird have your cake and eat it too thing where frankly, like I remember after episode nine wondering why are all the Raylos and sequel trilogy fans so upset about this film? It's because that film wasn't made for them. 
that film was made for other people to try to forgive or try to get forgiveness for the sequel trilogy. Well, I'm sorry, like that just didn't work. You know what I mean? And, and it feels like the extension of that is a stink that is all over everything in Star Wars. How are fans not supposed to feel that way about this announcement? You tell me. Is, is my camera okay now? Yeah, you look good, man. Chris, are we are we okay? Is my camera okay? So, looks crispy. Like, I swear. The attendant on my life has left me scarred and did it all. Nice, dude. <laughs> Looking good now, though. It's nice now. Okay, great. All right, we can start the show. Finally, finally. <sighs> yeah, just just had to rant a little bit about the the no, Lego good. thing. Yeah, that's man. it's good. Yeah, uh, I, I think yeah, especially for sequel fans, they're gonna feel like like what the hell, you know? Because we have Star Wars, we have Lego Star Wars um, prequels and originals. Totally did. You know, um, we don't have the new thing, so. Yeah, man. It's just a weird situation. I mean, honestly, like, it's like, I, I, in theory, I know you feel this way, but it's like we personally don't have anything against sequel fans. We just not like the biggest fans nope. of those movies. So it's like, dude, I want sequel fans to get treated right by Lucasfilm. Just like I want personally to get treated right by Lucasfilm. You know what I mean? Like, so again like you know we talk, talk about a wedge in the fandom man if we could actually just get people together and that's what i thought we were trying to do with the pablo thing was like dude pablo is publicly crapped on Raylos, you know uh <laughs> sequel fans um prequel fans you know fandom menace like he this guy just craps on everybody man there's no respect over there so yeah. i felt like in that moment and just kind of moving forward like the fans should recognize that like it's, it's this shouldn't be an attack we shouldn't have friendly fire going on here. You know what I mean? Like all the fire should be aimed at Lucasfilm, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's um, onwards and upwards, I say. Um, what's up, Josh? How do you all feel about the new Star Wars Legacy section Disney Plus added? added and I just, oh, dude, I love it. Yeah, I'm dude, so I happy they added it. I know, yeah, right? Great. Yeah. I did the, the first watch party for the 2003 Clone Wars, which amazing show if you guys haven't seen it. Yeah, um, and then they got a whole bunch of movies there that I've never actually seen. So like the Ewok stuff, I've never seen those. That is fantastic. I should do a watch. I'm gonna do a watch party this week on, for some of those. Yeah, man, that's that's fun stuff, and it just kind of gets you back into that just spirit of Star Wars. You know what I mean? We love you too, Iron Giant. Thanks, buddy. I want Georgia sequels. Yeah, so do I, man. Me too. Josh's background, though. Yeah, no, Josh is uh, Josh is big time. He's switching it up every week. <laughs> I know, right? Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> true. And look, I think you know a good crash court or like a, a a good redemption sort of thing right now, and for them to be you know release uh, I don't know uh, a demo of like a level, dude, for sure. That would be easy. great. That'd be great. There's one level that's done. There's one ten five minute gameplay that's finished. Like, come on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, I, I mean, I just I, I don't know if I know enough about it to really go hard, super hard on them, but it just feels like if it's a Lego game. Like I just don't understand, you know what I mean? Exactly what the issue is. It's, could it's be. not cyberpunk, bro. Like it's that's what yeah, exactly. Like, dude, like come on, like no offense, guys, but like if they can crank out like Dragon Ball games like all yeah. the time, that yeah. I mean, like everybody knows all the arcs, you know, you, you know the Saiyan Taga, you know the clone talk, you know what I mean? Like you it, you're yeah. you're Gucci. It's the same thing in Star Wars, dude. All these stories yeah. we know them. Put a cool twist on it for sure, but like I'm sorry, this is not a big next gen game. Like, I just, I don't understand it, man. What's the best and worst part about being a Star Wars fan? And will there ever be a middle ground? No, because we're very passionate. Hmm. So when we like something, we like something. When we don't like something, we don't like something. And we're very vocal about it. The problem yeah, is that, you know, um, I feel like there are more eloquent ways and respectful ways to go around things uh, go around saying like for me for example like when i say i don't like the sequels i don't say anyone who likes the sequels is a piece of poo poo and sh shouldn't isn't a real star wars fan i just say i don't like the sequels yep you yep. know so there, there are ways of doing it uh if you have a passionate uh, uh subjective idea about something about one of the movies or shows or whatever you just be like, yeah, yo, it wasn't for me for this and this and this reason instead of, you know, um, whatever. 
So. Yeah, man. I will say that I think the best part of be, about being a Star Wars fan is that like when you're at a convention or if you're in line for a movie or you're going to a big event, there's a camaraderie there that is real crazy. So like as much as we do like kill each other and like come at each other real hard, there is sort of this camaraderie that happens when you're at a convention or you're at a place with a bunch of Star Wars fans. There's just this excitement. And man, is there any better feeling than going to a new Star Wars movie and and and, and the opening crawl goes, no. you know what I mean? And then you and no. then it's like the fanfare hits and there's nothing better, bro. You know what I mean? So like we're all like despite I was thinking about this today too, despite where we're at, you know, very divided fan base, some people very upset, some people kind of upset, some people just disinterested. Regardless, I think in 2023 or 2024, whenever that movie comes out, I guarantee you uh, everybody's going to be in the theater, bro. Like everybody's going to be there, going to be ready, and there'll be an excitement. There will be something in the air, you know what I mean, that you can't yeah. quite describe. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. So that's probably the best thing about it. The worst thing is people hurt each other, man. You know, there, there's a lot of pain in this fandom, you know, a lot of trauma in this fandom, you know, like you said, people, it's so serious and visceral to people that, uh, it is, it makes me as an introvert, be an extrovert. Mm, yeah. Uh, if you could pick, pick it, uh, what if, if you could pick, would you prefer a, a Bane game? Dude? Yeah. Because we kind of already have the Revan game and I Bane, be, dude, I want to, yes, yes. Get Bane everything, bro. Like Bane should be the play. He's just such a cool dude. Such yeah, a man. cool storyline and character. And like it just I don't know. It's sweet. Yep. It's pretty sweet. Strong. Strong. Did you know when the Sith in the in the the Bane book, did you know when the Sith were fighting each other? Like in the Jedi Temple, how Jedi would uh duel each other with these like uh these sort of weaker lightsabers that can't yeah. cut through anything. So the Sith, they would train with these swords that had this serrated edge and like on the edge or something, I forgot the specifics and someone can correct me or, or embellish it. Um, it was like from some species or whatever. And so when it would, if it would hit you, uh, it would release a toxin in your skin and it would burn and it would immediately paralyze that, that part. That's awesome. To mimic a lightsaber, what it would be like if you got yeah. hit with a lightsaber so you wouldn't have an arm anymore or something like they were badass, dude. Yeah, man. They were cool. That's awesome. And you know, we have not seen enough of that, bro. You know, that was probably one of the biggest disappointments in the Last Jedi was the fact that we never we didn't see any of Snoke training Kylo. Because at the end of that, when he's like, "It's time to complete his training," man, I spent two years thinking about Dark Side training. I was like, "We've never seen Dark Side training before. We've never actually seen it in the movies." Yo, let's go! And instead, he like squeegees him across the floor. You know what I mean? It this, you know, this, this, that was it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, Vito wants more close-ups of you. There you go, Vito. Best I can do. There you go, Vito. <laughs> Hope you're happy, bro. Yeah, bro. Uh, the delay shall feel the full power of the duck. Look, I'm all for delays, man, for games. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes I need to perfect the game. No one wants a half-baked game. For sure. Right? But we got to also think, hey, Maybe there's some more to it, and it's theory time. That's really all it is. It's nerd theory. That's what we do. Yeah, man. So, Definitely. You know, people were saying, did you see the TikTok video of uh, the Obi-Wan set? Yes. Yeah. I, I pretty, saw it on Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I mean, there's nothing really too crazy in there, but I saw some people talking about it on chat. I mean, it looks super fun, and whoever went in there was definitely not supposed to be posting that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything really spoilery in there. It just looks like Tatooine to me. Yeah, I didn't post anything about it because it just, I don't know. Sometimes it, it's weird. Um, like as I've progressed as a, as a content creator for Star Wars stuff, I've kind of almost taken a step back and I'm like, look, how would I feel if I was producing that show and this was leaked and then the biggest Star Wars YouTuber goes and actually covers it? Yep. Like, uh, no, I don't man, think John I, Favreau would feel too hot about that. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. you know, I, I like cool, you know, views for me, but 
I was just like, I'll pass on this one. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a whole thing too with me because it's like a huge part of what we do, right? So it's it always, is. yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's always weird. Like, I, I, there are some people that are like really into spoiler culture, and they just frankly don't care, right? And then there's other people that really, really care. And you know, honestly, man, when I was outside of it, I never understood it. I was like, why would you want to ruin? You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I don't understand. Like, I love the whole thing. And then after I started doing it. I realized that it actually doesn't take your enjoyment away at all. It actually creates like sort of a new layer of enjoyment, but I, I know right. this, prob this probably isn't universal, but for right. me, it's sort of like a, there's this whole fun aspect of trying to figure it out. And then there's the experience of watching it. And to be honest with you, especially on the first go, I usually don't actually connect that side that was trying to figure it out to the experience. Like I, a classic example was in force awakens, I legitimately forgot that Poe did not actually die at the beginning. And I knew yeah. that from leaks, right? So I, in the leaks, I was like, I knew that Poe was going to come back. But in the when I was watching the film, I totally forgot. So when they come in on Takudana, I was completely surprised, right? right? Because the film's so good that like that part of my brain gets shut off. You know what I mean? Like the sort of figure it out part. So... I don't know. For me, it's a little bit different. And it's funny because like, dude, now I get so many more leaks where I have to really like I talk. I only talk about probably 30 percent of the stuff I hear. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it's like like you said, dude, like you don't want to ruin that for John or dude. Dave what if or... they're someone just commented? What if they're deleting Cara Dune from the game? Bro, I mean, that like, there's got to be an explanation, right? And yeah, I didn't think Cara, But if they're deleting Cara Dune, here's what I don't understand. If they're deleting Cara Dune, how big of a part did Cara Dune have? And here's yeah. the other, here's the truth. If she did have a big part, we we deserve to know. Because, you know, look, my whole thing with the Cara Dune situation and Gina, I mean, you and I have talked about this to death, right? Yeah. I, you know, I feel like she didn't do anything super wrong, but at the same time, she was poking the bear in a way that she should have been aware would be a problem. For God's sakes, they had PR. They were spending money to try to help that problem. She just kind of didn't want to play ball, in my opinion. However, one thing we don't know is how much was Gina going to be involved in that Ranger show? How big of a role was I Gina going to play? It. Bro, if that's the case, which I've heard that she was going to sort of co-star with Katie Sackhoff, right? Yeah. Bro, if that's the case, then it's beyond just firing someone. It's your restructuring again because of you can't keep your your people on the same page you know what i mean like frankly here's the thing as the fans dude what do i care what problem you have with gina as a company i literally don't i care about the content yeah so it's like if you screwed up the content well the character made... has a story the character is irrelevant to real life exactly it, precisely and, and the whole thing is like did did a decision by people at Lucasfilm not only affect Gina's life super negatively, but did it also affect John's life negatively? Did it Absolutely, affect Dave's yeah. life negatively? That's what yeah. I mean, right? It, it's like, it made it, yeah, it made it harder. I mean, you have to you have to now rewrite the story in a sense and um, kind of explain what happened to this character as she's gone now, and then yeah. you know bring someone else in that you know substitutes that character. It's like a substitute teacher. It's like one day you go to school. It's like well, where 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 is Mister Johnson? Yeah, man. Well, maybe Mr. Yeah. Johnson's a bad name. Where's Mr. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What, what's the school teacher name? Mr. Garrison. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of all the school teachers I, I had, and I just don't want to name any of them for yeah, their own privacy. Man. I don't know. Who yep. knows? Yeah. Who knows? Um, would you like to see an adaptation of the Young Jedi Knights from Yet Legends? If so, would you want an animation or live action? Either one. Yeah, those, Either one would those were great. Yeah, those were great books. Um, they could totally do that. Shout out to you, Theory's a fan for four years. You gave me a new love for Star Wars and helped me become a super fan in a way. Josh, you know I love you. You're both giving me so much inspiration this past crazy year. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Is that you at Galaxy's Edge? Is that what that is? I think it is. Him Looks and the dope. lady. Yeah, him yeah, and the lady in front of me. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate the love, my friend. <clears throat> Do you know I'm not the only one excited to change my Disney Plus account icon to Anakin when the new series comes out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to be all over that, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, I was thinking we could maybe do something a little bit different today because yeah. you know, there's not much going on in Star Wars right now for the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Um, 
I was thinking how how could we get callers in right now? So there's a couple of different ways that we could do it. Um, you could drop a link. That's going to probably be pretty chaotic. Yeah. Um, you could also do something via Discord with uh, just chats. So I don't know if you have something the like that set up. Yeah. With Discord is that everyone in there is somewhat like-minded uh, in the sense that, I don't know, I kind of want someone who fundamentally disagrees with both of us and maybe almost hates us as a person. <laughs> I just feel like that would be entertaining to watch, entertaining to... It uh, would be entertaining to watch. To do debate. we have any volunteers? <laughs> do we have any volunteers? Anyone here who hates our guts? Yeah. We'd yeah, love to talk to with on. you and, and, and find out your the reasoning I mean, frankly, if somebody has something that, like they want to get off their chest or they want to address or maybe. They yeah, don't like, I'm, all I mean? I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for a platform for that. And I want you to be able to express yourself um, however you want. You know, I, I might just. Yeah, I think it would be fun. Yeah, man. I'm you down. know, I'm down. <laughs> Orbiter Rangers says I can. How do we, how do, we do it? If, if, if anyone's down. Um... <laughs> well, maybe you should get them like on the. Um like on the twitter dms and then you can send them the link that way No, because <laughs> the only thing is if you post the link in the chat dude it's gonna be like a million everyone's people. gonna join you <laughs> yeah and you got to be over the age of 18 so you got to be legal you got to be over the age of 18 that's youtube's um youtube's rules for sure stuck in my craw with the sequels of that nothing before makes it where they pushed it back decades so many great characters and stories from legends could have been adapted I agree. No, I think you two are nice lads. <laughs> nice. Maybe the sequel trilogy was a bad dream for Luke. Yeah, come on. No one's no one's saying anything now. Oh, there's so many people uh, here. Who... Yeah. Well, maybe though. Yeah, maybe we'll get somebody like that. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Star was only. Um, I'd be down he's, to he's see just what one. you have to he's say. He's just one of many. You know. Um, <clears throat> I will say too, you know, we were sort of talking about this a little bit. Maybe we'll wait while people are coming to get in. I, I did want to get your thoughts on, uh, so they're doing the, for the star Wars 50th anniversary, they're going back and redoing some of the old legend books, some of the best ones, including heir to the empire. Apparently it's going to be new art for the cover, some new art inside the book, and then even a new audio book, a new recording production. So I guess my question is to you, does, is this just a fun little 50 year thing or do you, are you reading anything further into this? I mean, you and I know you and I kind of talked about this a little bit, but what do you think, man? I'm not reading chat. Everyone's saying Darth Chaco. Isn't Darth Chaco a member? I was just told today. Darth Chaco. Well, that who knows? That doesn't discount anything. Yeah, right. I recently had a member turn on me and record everything I said in a private live stream with my members and recorded everything they said. And um, one of them whose dad is a lawyer is actually, I've been talking them down to not do anything because they're just like very pissed off at that invasion yeah. of privacy. But I don't know if anything can even be done about that. I don't think it should be, but um, who knows, man, I guess there are more people in there. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Who is this Darth Chaco? I don't even know who this is, but uh I don't know. It's someone who joined my Discord today. Huh. All right. Well, maybe he'll pop in or whatever. Again, but uh Pablo? Oh I dude. dude I have I'd his number. It. I have his I'd number. Hit him up. No. <laughs> uh, no. So what do you think about that Air of the Empire thing, man? Are they just doing that for fanciness or uh are know, we about dude, to get I, more I, air of the empire? I, I think there's a little more. Um, yeah, maybe you know, maybe they're just revamping it. And maybe they're just you know bringing it back with a new cover or something like that. They're doing that with um, the Mace Windu. Oh, wow, yeah, the Shatterpoint, right? Shatterpoint, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're also doing it with what was the other book? They're doing? Yeah, Drew Carpetian's one of his good ones, Bane. Bane, yeah, that's the yep. thing. Okay, but let me just be, okay, yeah, but let's talk about this, okay? All right. Bro, it's rumored that they are doing a Mace Windu series, okay? It's rumored they're heavily going to do some shit with Bane, for sure. And mm -hmm. it's also rumored, and not even rumored at this point, we know Thrawn is coming. I mean, Ahsoka said, where's the Grand Admiral Thrawn? 
and there's been so much leaks and rumors to suggest that Thrawn is going to play a massive role in the Filoni verse. So it's like, you know, you think about it, Bane's on the way, they're doing one of the greatest Legends books of all time in a new revamped version, a new audio book, you know, all that fanciness. Same thing with Thrawn, Heir of the Empire, same thing with Shatterpoint. I'm kind of feeling like there's a connection. I'm kind of feeling like they're trying to say to the Legends fans directly, we got you. You know what I mean? And and this is sort of, a, a, here's that book you loved. Oh, by the way, you just got that book you love. Guess what? Now this character's on Disney Plus. Come back to Star Wars, baby. You know what I mean? What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, they're maybe gauging fan reaction or fan interest in the certain things. And that's why they're kind of revamping it. Or maybe it's just an anniversary. And they're like, yo, just... new cover. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's totally for collectors. Yeah. For, you know, it, we appreciate the ones who have, who love this series or whatever. And that's, sure. I think that's dope. I think it's dope too. It just is a little different than their normal. Okay, you guys strat. are not you know letting I mean? it go to start with Chaco. Yeah, who that? Do a great takedown of that hater about the younglings crap. You handle that much better than I would. Cheers to my two favorite channels, Josh. So I get nerd coin for this. Right. So yeah, if you guys <laughs> want to see what he's talking about in my um on my gaming channel, I addressed a couple just a couple people trying to get some clout. And uh you can see it right. Wait, is Darth Chaco a TikTok? Oh, Darth Chaco is a TikToker, huh? Oh, he's not a YouTuber? I guess he's a TikToker. Okay. Yeah, so there's this one, and there's this one the other day. If you guys want to check it out, go check out my gaming channel, which is also like my second channel. So Yeah. Yeah, man, I can't wait to like actually get gaming again, man. I'm trying to get I'm trying to do some gaming with you, bro. Dude, I'm ready, man. I game every day. I know. Unfortunately, I'm not ready. <laughs> Friggin' <laughs> internet. <laughs> Uh, the guy who recorded you called me toxic fandom menace on the discord and then played victim that's why I left your discord theory dude you left because of him well he's out of there so yeah I spent two hours to speak one on one with him and you know hear him out and hear his point of view and um, and then he turned on us again and um, dude that is so crazy started too. hating you, again you yeah. gave him two hours of your time yeah, I gave him two hours of my time. Yeah, just to hear him out. That is, I mean, I care, man. Like, no, you know, I know you do. That's the believe. thing. It's crazy people to people me. People think I don't give a shit. People right. think I just like, oh, he's just. A, it's like, no, dude. I've been the same person I've been since I had zero subscribers. I care. I care about people um, in general. I care about my subscribers, and I care about um, my community. So. Dude, it's nuts, man. And like, I know the world is weird and stuff, but like, bro, I can't imagine talking to someone for two hours, like really trying to reach them on like a human being level and them just nothing. You know what I mean? Like that feels yeah. so weird to me, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, that's trouble. Well, I'm not going to reveal his name because I want to respect his privacy. I don't want you guys blowing him up. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting world. You know, you, you do what you can. And um what more can you do if you tried speaking with someone? It's, yep. I mean, dude, it sounds like you did way. You, you went way above the call of duty on that. I should have just ignored. Yeah, I, I mean, just I can't. Time. I don't know if I could. I mean, I can do that with like multiple people. I can't imagine like just like, dude, like your time is valuable, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. I like, that's wild, man. That yeah. that dude doesn't even realize. Yeah. And by the way, I saw I saw that pin thing, and we will figure something like that out. Theory and I have been talking about an RPG for a long time, and that would be a very fun thing to do with y'all. So we will figure that out for sure. Yeah, I just played uh, Among Us with uh, my joint members. That's okay. awesome. Okay, dude. all right. So I'm going to try to get this Darth Chaco guy. On yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love Jeremy and Ryan Kinnell on. They have different takes than you. It would be fun. I like Ryan, uh, and I'm willing to talk to Jeremy. Jeremy and I really don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but uh, I would be respectful and uh, and try to hear him out for sure. But Ryan and I go way back, man. I like Ryan. He's a TikToker, and he thinks you've turned toxic and bad. That's so ironic. That just feels ironic to me. I mean, I guess I don't know enough about TikTok to, to make that statement, but like, how's a tick? I don't know. You know what? I think I might do a TikTok. I'm going to ask Chaco about his TikTok. When he I just, I just um, pinged 
Chaco in my Discord because I guess he's in there. Cool. Um, but Rogue Soul, I want you to come back, man. I don't want you to. Uh... Yeah, he's one of my members, man. And I know, like, look, we've had. Yeah. And like my community, like we've had stuff go on too. And like the truth is, man, it's just tough times. And like people are going to disagree and it's okay. You know, and like we try to be respectful. And I know there's like culture war stuff that breaks out. And it's just, it is what it is, man. So, uh, you know, just trying to do the best we can, you know? Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. Um, don't make a TikTok. <laughs> I made a TikTok. I'm going to make one, dude. I want to make one. I want to be a big TikTok star now. I probably don't need good internet to be a TikTok. <laughs> Fresh Harvest commentary is kind of the worst, to be honest. Uh, I've just seen people do some... Um, actually, there's there's one Star Wars TikToker that I that I enjoy. Um, I think it's Star Wars Replicas. He's a really nice guy. Okay. Great string theory. Ignore the negativity because the quality and effort you put into your videos deserves more respect. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Bubba. Good stuff. Um, so what's the dude do with the... I'll do a call with you and tell you why you shouldn't associate with members of the fan. Let, let's do this, man. Let's have some callers on today yeah. and make it entertaining and you know just have some fun. And Absolutely, man. It beats us just rambling on about the same old thing when there's nothing really to talk about right now. I mean, we could Has talk about like theories like, would Mace Windu defeat Anakin or something like that? But yeah. Let's no, switch it up today. Yeah, you you're right, bro. Hey, look, okay. it's live, man. You know, I I wanna I wanna clear this up. I don't associate with anybody from the fandom menace. I know you guys think Jeremy is a part of the fandom menace. He said a million times he's not part of the fandom menace. So really, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he doesn't associate himself with the fandom menace. Interesting. Yeah, not anymore, at least. Yeah, not Star Wars late, but you read the Dark Knight Returns, and what are your thoughts on it, guys? Dark Knight Returns is sick, dude. I mean, it's one of the, literally the best Batman stories ever. Frank Miller, and he was drawing too. I mean, it's probably I, Frank doesn't really draw that much anymore. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure he wrote and drew Dark Knight Returns. Someone double check me in the chat, but I'm pretty dang sure he did. Uh, incredible scenes, incredible dialogue, some of the best Joker Batman stuff ever. Um, Bruce beating superman i mean how first of all the first i'm gonna gush for a second here the opening panel man old bruce wayne car crash formula one cars flying out of control flames all around and he says inside his head he says this would be a good death but not good enough and then he hits the eject button i'm like let's go like this is my batman like let's go and that's just the first page you know what i mean so dark knight returns get on it if you have not Oh, 100 percent I want to hit three million subs right now so I can just get it over with. So at three million subs, I'm gonna do a stream, reveal my name, reveal everything you want to know about me. Um yeah, I don't know, just vibe with the community, chill with the community like I always do. I don't know, yeah. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you uh you you didn't happen to be uh shooting golf? in uh san diego a couple of days ago did you yeah i was why i, I thought so yeah I got a, I, there was a guy that like a guy reached out to me and said that he was he saw you oh nice yeah i was yeah. like that's wild yeah no i'm in canada so i know bro <laughs> that's what i told him i was like dude what are you talking about yeah and the dude had a different name than yours. And he was like, is this his name? I'm like, no. What are you talking about? Godfather scene of, yeah, see, Notorious knew it was Godfather. How'd you know? Oh, because he knows that he's over there. No, Tony Stark's trying to copy him. Nerd, are you trying to top him? Oh, dude, for real, though. Look, Tony had this, got this idea from me. You know what I mean? But it's okay. Uh, he He wears it better, you know? What's up, Scoundrels Cantina? How you doing, man? Yeah, well, God bless you too, man. One of the OGs. Golf's worse than TikTok? <clears throat> we can talk about Boba. Okay, so I guess uh, Darth Chaco is unavailable because he's not answering. So okay. Okay. Is, is there anybody else that would like to come on air and speak? Yeah, um, wasn't there one other person? I, f I felt like there was somebody. Yo, so, was... Someone get a hold of Star Wars only right now. Yeah, for real. 100%. Dude, anybody, anybody. 
Anybody. I might anybody. know. So let me let me tweet it. Blow them up on Twitter or whatever, man. Anybody. I don't care. I'll debate anybody right now. I think it'll be fun. Let me see what I can do. Let's see if I can get. I don't. I knew nice. a guy that knew him. Yeah, it sucks. But hopefully when it comes out, it'll be great. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I've got any way to get a hold of Star Wars only. But the invitation is open. Would be cool. R&B. I love R&B. Dude, Robert Meyer Burnett's great. Yeah. I hit him up on Twitter a couple weeks back, but no response. <laughs> People are saying... Is anybody... No one. You guys all want to make the videos about me on your channels, but yeah, man, come on, guys. Somebody, somebody's gotta. Somebody wants come to get on, in here. Somebody, somebody's gotta get on. Come on, let's in do here. it. Uh, let's do it. I wonder if there's anybody. You know, let me check my Discord because I'm. There might be even some people in my community that they don't even like. They don't even agree with me. <laughs> they might want to come argue. Okay, someone's saying element seven. Element seven. Element seven. Okay. Another element seven. Sure, man. Yeah. Anybody. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Yo, Ben, get on. Come on, Ben. On all social media and say subs to Star Wars here. Maybe so, just drop a link on Twitter and, and see who. I mean, who that's going to be wild if you want to do that. There, uh, there is a guy. I know there's a dude in my community named Star Wars Santa, and I know he has uh, strong feelings about the sequel trilogy and the uh, the fandom menace. I don't know if Star Wars Santa is. Yo, Santa, if you're watching, let me know. A lot of people are saying who's Element Seven. I don't know. Let me call in. I did not like Mando season two. Connor, we're looking for disagreements, not craziness. Uh, um, waiting. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, there's some people that said they I don't know. I don't know if Santa's watching. He might not be watching. But Let's see here. This is where the fun begins. Waiting. <laughs> yeah, people are in my Discord are like calling on Santa. Calling on Santa. Who's Santa? Santa. Star Wars Santa. He's Star a Star Wars explained. Wars. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I Come don't, on, Alex. Sure, man. Bring him on. I don't care. Anybody. Except he blocked me after mm -hmm. he made after his wife made fun of me for crying. That's tough, man. Mike Zero, sure. Bring Mike on. Say what's up, Mike. I'd be like, Mike, what's going on, man? Are you getting all your news from an alternate Star Wars reality? I say Element Seven mostly because it would be good debate since he agrees with a lot of the things you said and how you handled your socials. Okay. Look, a lot of people have those feelings. Any mm -hmm. one of them could come in right now, and honestly, I will be so respectful. Like that's the thing. Like mm -hmm. for real, for real. Like just. Thor Skywalker, maybe you know what I mean. Thor Skywalker yeah, is a good sure. channel. Um, Still haven't watched the stuff. Yeah, he does good stuff, man. I haven't. I don't even know if he's done any content lately. I assume maybe he has, but uh, yeah, he's he's he does good stuff. Hey, Mark Fernandez. He... <laughs> Who's that guy? Now just play. <laughs> Got him. It's true. It is true. And hey, look, if that game comes out delayed and it's incredible, I will go back and say like, wow, they did the right thing there. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I would, but I don't hate y'all guys. You're my fave. Love you to bits. You don't have to hate us. 
I mean, like, just maybe disagree with us on some topics. I just would say it's more entertaining if you hate us. It would be it would be entertaining for the con content. <laughs> Star, Star Wars Elseworlds. <laughs> it was that's my boy. That's Star my uh, that's my ex editor. Yeah. Nice, dude. <laughs> Stupendous wave, man. I'd be down for Geekdom. He's my boy too. Yo, Geekdom's awesome, man. Danny's a good Danny's good people. I feel like Danny and we would all pretty much. We have agree. a list. I don't know who any of these people are, but yeah. Best cool. three for you is Elemental. Dark Chaco, I I've heard of now. Um now I'm familiar yeah. familiarized. I don't know if drunken uh, if we would just sure man. Drunken, uh, yeah, you know what? No problem. Who's Generation Tech? Why does that sound familiar? I don't Generation Tech. Uh he he's that guy with the uh the nice thumbnails. Okay. I'll have to look into that. I'm not familiar. Bringing Luke in at the end of season two was terrible. Bye. Thanks. See you, Darth Red. See you, bro. Emperor Sawyer has been me. nice. She's been nice to me. Emperor yeah, but Sawyer? I'm sure. I'm I don't sure know who that is. On too. I don't care. Is she, uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Let's just say this, too. If you disagree with me, that's fine, too. Some people might not disagree with mm -hmm. you as much. If they disagree right, with true. me, that's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'll just be moderator. Yeah, yeah dude. Look, I'll represent the Soy Boy Mafia. This could be a thing, dude. This could be this could be a really entertaining show for a lot of people. I, and it's, it's fun. It wouldn't just be our echo chamber you know yeah. on the show it could be you know a, a diverse opinion it'd be fun dude i'm down i'm down to clown i'll be nice oh i love knights of melvin he's a great guy is he good okay i have to check him yeah, out he's I'm, made about I, I think 57 videos on me now so far 57 <laughs> damn dude yeah 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 <laughs> okay. he's um he's like he's like a doom cock he oh, goes okay. there with, with his mask and what did you block drunk <laughs> Did I block drunk? No. Why? No, no. Because when I see messages that don't have a uh, message, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Melvin can come on too, but I don't think it would work in his favor because he can't use his voice changer. So I don't even know who that wow, is. Wow. The people that talk the talk on social media they can't do when they're called out like this. The chickens that they are, the people who call them out, grow up and act like grown ups. Yeah. I'm inviting literally anybody right now that wants to come and talk with me who may disagree with my views on Star Wars or whatever. <laughs> um, by all means, just type it in chat, and that's it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Can we just be on who's hotter theory? What the hell? I'll just screw you something. Pick a topic. Let's go. Okay. Um, it says the link, Discord link is just expired. Yeah, we changed it because of that one guy that came in there and started inviting a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Let's just uh let's call him Seth. Okay. Let's call him Seth. That's not his actual name. Let's just call him Seth. Gotcha. They are indeed delaying the game, yeah. Yes, they are, and Lord Master's uh, my boy. Yeah, I'll bring him on. <laughs> Richard Nixon. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Chaco again. Yeah, man. Um, it, it, maybe, it maybe he'll turn it around or whatever. I mean, frankly, like I feel like you and I are both in pretty chill moods. It's not like we're gonna attack. We're always in chill moods. Yeah. Matt Pat from Film Theory. Dude, Matt Pat is uh, awesome. Who's that? He's the guy that does the Film Theory channel. He's got, he, I mean, his YouTube voice is like a little bit higher and, you know, he, it's a film theory. You ever watch film theory? <laughs> no. Bring in pudes. Yeah. Pudes the Empire up. did nothing wrong. Empires are built on the blood of Mars. Okay. Yeah. I, I like Yikes. that idea. We could talk about that until someone hopefully comes in and, um, yeah, shuts us down. Starkaball, the official Star Wars channel. The official Star Wars channel. Hey, come on in. Look, Molly is, I mean, why not? Who? They said Molly. Molly sure. Damon. Anybody. Yeah, man. I don't care. Come on in. It's a discussion. It, Nothing like, I like having discussions, and maybe in the end we'll all be friends. Like, it's very... Yeah, and we can, obviously, nice too, time. maybe tonight's a little too crazy for some people. Maybe they can let us know at a, a, a future time. But, like, honestly, I do. I'm with you, brother. I think it could be a good thing. I mean, especially because, like, 
like I just feel like the community's been through a lot, you know, and uh, I understand yeah, I mean, the passion. We, you know, we try but, to just make it as you know entertaining as we can. So. Yeah. To Mara Morrison, yeah. yeah. What about Matt Damon? I don't want anything to do with Pablo. Yeah, that's probably not the best look. No, I don't want anything to do with that guy. All right, let me check the Discord, see if anybody. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but being drunk don't really disagree on anything. It's... I know. I mean, drunk and I actually disagree on way less than most people would realize. I mean, I had an incredible conversation with Jay. I think he's like literally salt of the earth. He's a really good dude. You know, I he disagree. Is. I disagree with him on how he's, he does he's a nice his person. branding and stuff, but he's a good dude. He's a nice person. Yeah. What do we call you? Theory? Well, it's like PewDiePie, man. You guys know it's Felix Gelberg. Um, yeah. but you call him Pewds. So yeah, it's whatever you want. Yeah, man. What do you feel like? Theory does kind of look like Sebastian Stan. I saw nah, somebody better say that. <clears throat> Screw you, Josh. I disagree with you. Well, come on then. Disagree with me. Come on, I'll play nice. All right, let's get somebody on because I'm. I I just feel like debating. <laughs> Man, the chat's having a lot of fun here. Anybody can chat. Yeah. You guys are great. I don't disagree much as I feel I've learned so much from you, but I do believe Grogu should turn. The... Let me message. Let me message. Um. And I mean, here I'll I'll message some peeps and see. Let's see here, what's this? Yikes! Okay, that's weird. Send <clears throat> someone the link right now. Just got a really weird message about Spider Man. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. What is it? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into it. Should I just drop the link on Twitter? I mean, dude, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I feel like that might be a bad way to go. Uh, here, I'm gonna hit right. up. Uh, I mean, dude, we can, but I'm just telling you, I feel like the odds are gonna go way up on getting trolls in if you just drop it on Twitter. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's what we want. That's true. I mean, that's fair. But like, trolls that we can still have fun with for sure. But trolls that come in and say some flagrant ass shit, you know what I mean? That might not be chill. Yeah, but then you just kick him. True. But and aren't you worried? Would you be worried about the strike or whatever? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because technically I had a strike one time and I wasn't streaming. And my partner manager said, it doesn't matter. If technically you're you're supposed to be watching everything that goes out of your channel and it, uh, it's on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Still. So I was like, whoa. And I, when I realized that, I got way more restrictive with the streams. I'm going to hit up a... from water bottle emoji. I like to hydrate. I run pretty hot. So, yeah. I like to hydrate. I'm always warm. Because Canadian. I don't know. Um, people should stop saying what Star Wars should do and enjoy the series. It's one of the reasons George sold. Yeah, I think people are entitled to all their opinions. <laughs> Star Wars, Jen Grievous, who would <laughs> Come on. Oh, Say man. hello on Twitter, you will get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hello, yeah. Twitter. Done. <laughs> You'll never work in this town again. Okay, let me let me post a tweet right now if anyone wants to to join it and uh um whoa. take the sip. Um let's see here. Drunk three POs in the chat, get him on for sure. But we're both kind of saying we might not disagree with Jay, but maybe we will get him on either way. Get Robot Head on. Look, Robot Head does some dope videos. I've only seen a couple, but he does an incredible amount of editing on them. Uh not necessarily my thing, but good shit. 
It was delayed again, says Shane. It was, dude, and we're pretty fired up about it. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to see Brie Larson be a Jedi. Eh, not really. Um, Josh, Josh versus Jeremy. I mean, we've already done one round of that a year ago. Uh, I don't know if either one of us really want to do it again, but um, I think we just frankly just disagree. There's not really an argument to be had there with me and Jeremy. I think we just frankly see it differently, and that's okay. What is uh what game is in the background? It's a Star Wars variety Boom. arcade game. Just tweeted it. Boom. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> we shall see what happens. General Kenobi. Bree has less facial expressions than Daisy. Mm, that might be true. That might be true. We need a Discord <laughs> link. Theory will literally, literally kiss you, no homo. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Why not homo? D. Badly, Bradley Baker, someone wants. You know, I think we should bring on is Kathy Kennedy, man. You know, honestly, Kathy, if you're watching this, or if this makes it to you, somebody clip this out and send it to her. I think it would actually go a long way for the community and the brand. If you would open yourself up to uh, just talking to the fans, you know, even Susan Wojcicki does that. You know, the CEO of YouTube, even she goes out and does interviews with big YouTubers and stuff. Yeah. And she, you know what I mean? And so it's just like, look, it's right. 2021. Like, I know you don't fully understand the internet, but I think it would legit help if you got, if you came on. <laughs> Uh oh, got someone that says, I mean, sure, maybe. Ugh, it doesn't sound good. Let's try to get a girl. Yeah. I find girls aren't going to pop off on you and be like, Oh, uh, Anna, uh, that Star Wars girl is uh, a little fiery from what I've heard. Okay, so why did they change the Force Ghost of Anakin from the Old Man? Okay, so they changed it, and George said this because. He reverted back to his um, pure form where he was in the light side. So back to who he was before, you know, he turned to the dark side. Right. Na, 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 na. Let's see here. Okay, let's see here. All right, so this is what I tweeted minutes ago, three minutes ago. Um, I don't know, chat, you guys can choose who, if you recognize anyone that you would like to come up here. And... Oh, Abby wants to come on, huh? Who's Abby? She's one of my members. Is she at the top? She's a nerd vendor. Yeah, yeah. Where? She said down. Bubbles Becky is also a member. Steven. Well, these are all your I think, people. Well, I think I, maybe I just see them because of the t Twitter algorithm. You know what I mean? You might not be seeing the same people at the tippy as I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> I see that oh. Mustafa. Mustafa says, Theory, I will literally kiss you. No homo. <laughs> Yo, I knew, some, I knew a dude named Mustafa from Morocco. Pretty fun dude, man. Dude, Moroccans are... are Moroccans can party, bro. <laughs> I'm going to start with you, but don't want to be hated on by anyone for anything I don't know, so have fun. <laughs> what? I don't know everything. Um, so there's a lot of things I don't know. Get Star so, Wars Santa on debate the sequels. It's not yeah, a big yeah. deal um, if you don't know some stuff. There's, stuff. there's a lot of stuff I don't know. I just say I don't know. Got to read it. It's All it is is just Googling it and reading it. I mean, there's nothing like... <laughs> Yeah, I had this moment the other day where I was like, man, I hate that people like uh, in the information like the crazy age, extra stuff. I mean, like not this is like it's crazy to me that people would hold any piece of information over someone else's head when we live oh, in a day yeah, and age when all information is accessible with our fingertips on a cell phone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Like, just get over yourself. You have a piece of information in your brain that's going to take me two seconds to find. Yeah, literally, yeah. It's nothing. You know what I mean? People are weird. Yeah. Star Wars Meg. Man, there's so many. Yo, Star, Star Wars, Wars Meg. I just recently okay. watched a video of hers. Uh, she's doing good. It's crazy, dude. There's like good, when so. I started, I think there were four. Yeah. Damn it, Josh. You almost said we live in a society. Hey, we do live in a society, though, you know? Society. Thoughts on a star R rated Star Wars movie? I think it would be awesome. And he can add the three in C3P's name because it represents him being the third member of the oh, That's cute. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, I said Luke should have wrecked the Gorilla Walkers in The Last Jedi. They finally listened to me with Dark Troopers and look at the Fran reaction. Yeah. Well, I, you know, Luke did that in um, Dark Empire. So nothing new there. Yeah. I love the content. There's so much for you guys. A question about the Bad Batch. Do you think we'll see Vader? I think we will. Thanks, Drizzy. I think so yeah. too. Yeah. It, it, but I think the main focus will be on Tarkin and the the, the clones. I'm not aware of this. Harmy's, I don't know what that is. What is that? Harmy's despecialized edition is probably like the like a, someone took the specialized editions and tried to make them look like the original versions probably. Because I think there's very few copies of the, I think the only OG copies were on a certain set of VHS tapes, which are probably been digitally restored. But that's probably what it is. Yeah. Maybe that's what the Acolyte's about. Hey, man, that would be great. You know, even playing in that world a little bit would be so yeah, smart. Dabbling. Yeah. Oh, that's why I don't do any of those Star Wars um, trivia shows or anything like that, because I just wouldn't do well, I feel like. I don't hmm. know every name of every person and every cantina that walks into a bar and I, I don't know this stuff like if you ask me what the first six movies i say like i will i'll do pretty damn well if you ask me about the story i will hold my own against people at lucasfilm um Dude, that's exactly that you're 100 percent right i feel the same way um because you're right. Like I, I don't have an encyclopedia brain for it, but everything I do know is is because of the story. Well, I, I could have I mean? that brain. I just don't have the interest to go through everything and say that. Oh, I know everything now. I don't care about that. I just yeah. care about the stuff that I find interesting, and that's the yeah. only thing that stuff that retains in my mind. Otherwise, and eh. that's usually story stuff with Star Wars. You know, for me, anyways, it's like it's just the joy of those characters going through that struggle, and then how I can connect information to the struggle of those characters. You know what I mean? Who is this Star Wars Santa, bro? Star Wars Santa is one of the nicest human beings on the planet. Uh, he is a literal Santa Claus. He's also a huge Star Wars fan and does content. So he's, he's got he's thing. he's got a big old Santa thing going on. That's funny. Yeah, he's probably uh, he's probably hot around the, the December time. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing: I don't hate you, and my disagreements with you are probably not super massive, though they do exist. How are you going to decide on rolling out a link? Okay, you know what? Let's just get her in there. Who is it? Uh, Lauren Blair. Lauren Blair. It's a Come girl. On, I, have a, I have a feeling she won't... I guess I'm being sexist, but I feel like women usually aren't as um, jerky as uh, guys. Yeah, I actually tend to agree. <laughs> but uh, who knows? to send her the link and then we'll get her in there yeah oh my god Jason <laughs> wow Right, I'm gonna take a quick pee and then uh, yeah. I will return. Cool, cool. I'll just hold it down with the chat. I'm a guy and I agree. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's not it's just a little statement. Don't take it too personally. I know some people out there like, ah, what are you talking about? Everybody relax. That's the quote right there. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. Um, yeah, that is the saying. But I don't know, man. 
I don't know if that's strictly true. It definitely sounds cool in a quote, though. Omega was the younger version of Captain Arnold. <laughs> Let's see here. Where's the OnlyFans link, Josh? Hey, look, we're working on that. Sheev wants to be on stream? Let me see here. I think I was talking to Sheev a little bit. Yeah, he's got his thing set up. Yeah, yeah, I see. I don't know if we can get Sheev in here tonight, but I'm going to... I know he's he's got his like setup going on right now. He's got his webcam thing going on. I think we'll get him in here eventually, one of these nights for sure. Uh, let's see here. See what else you guys are saying. Uh, makes sense. I mean, look at Cyberpunk. True. True. <laughs> Could uh, drunk three PO? That's because you don't return his calls. Yeah, 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 dude. Geez, drunk. Um, how about getting Star Wars coffee on the stream? I like Star Wars coffee. Haven't really talked to him in a long time, but uh, Josh can have my wife's ovaries. <clears throat> what? Send me an email. Um, let's see here. No more room. No more Star Wars debate. That sounded fun. No, we're gonna get it going. We're gonna get something going on here. I think we're bringing somebody in. Um, let's see here. You think they're hiding Qui Gon? Uh, love this show, Josh. Samurai Champloo is also my favorite anime. Also, dope soundtrack, dude. The best soundtrack. I subscribe to your channel instantly after hearing that. No regrets. Thank you, John. Really appreciate it. All right. She hasn't joined. She hasn't joined yet. Nope. Echo Base Network could work. I, I don't even know who that is, but they sound familiar. I feel like I've seen them before. Um, I went on their show once. Oh, you did? Okay. Maybe I do know them then. Maybe when I did the see them. The thing that's holding uh, going on. Okay. Dave, yeah. Dave okay. On I their think show I remember. For yeah. Interview. Is it the same people as Rebel Force Radio or no? Okay. Is the debate on? We're just trying to debate. Just trying. Honestly, I, I think what it is, is I like, don't talk about Marvel. Oh, wait, Mar oh, um, um, Josh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Darren, that's Wednesday nights, brother. Wednesday nights we do the show with Darren. Um, but uh, I don't know what Darren's doing right now. And besides, she is a Star Wars fan. She wasn't a big. She wasn't that super big into Mando. I don't know, Darren. I could have her on one of these nights, but uh, I don't know what she's doing right now. Sure. As I was telling my members um, today, that my <clears throat> demographics for women, uh, it was at 3% and then it jumped to 10. Nice. Yep. Like within the month. Yep. That can happen. You know, yeah, certain know times, why. yeah, man, certain times, like if you're covering certain content, it just does, just hits better with female audiences. You know what I mean? Right. I feel you. Okay, so she's not joining, so I guess we're going to find someone else. Yeah. And I mean, hey, look, maybe we need to give people a week. You know what I mean? Maybe they won't really be feeling it until yeah, next week. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe that's the thing. You know, we'll do this again next week. So, yeah, 100%. You know, sp spread the word if you guys want to get on and we'll have you on. Whatever. Yeah, and I'll talk to some of my members and stuff. And I know, like, for instance, I know Star Wars Santa. I, I, I'm sure he's going to feel terrible because people are going to hit him up and be like what were you doing or whatever don't worry about it santa we'll get you on here one of these days man yeah i'll debate you on why ot isn't very good if y'all want love oh anyways it's been a while since i've been on the streams of hive sub man yeah still drinking the protein you know man i'll show the master debaters <laughs> the master debaters that sounded good actually yeah ryan from rk outpost oh she's coming in She's Lauren, coming in. Yeah, Lauren Blair. She's coming in. Excellent. All right. Let me take the shades off. Ready to roll here. Oh, yeah. It's going to be our first guest, dude. Our first guest. This is the first this, guest ever. This is nice. Mark isn't a guest. He's he's our he's our master. Yeah, man. He's the grumpy old uh, Plagueis behind the scenes. <laughs> um Hey, what's up? What's up? Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. 
good. Welcome. That's strange. Oh my yeah. god. Hold on. I'd have to close it down on another link because it's there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it was echoing. How's no, it looks good. Um, it's good. I'm currently at university, so um cool. all that's going on. Um, but I find it very random that this is happening while I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. So yeah. I like it. Very cool. Very you, uh, you volunteered for tribute, so uh didn't the know what I was signing yours. up for, so I was the very like <laughs> We we would like you to reprimand us and uh and tell us why Put us in our place. I, yeah, how can uh, we do better? How can we do better? That's gonna be very difficult because I'm I'm not a super confrontational person. Um you don't have to be. <laughs> I mean just pretend like you're talking to uh your friends or something, you're like you're like, yeah. They're okay. okay. Like those guys are kind of annoying. I don't know. So please don't get mad at me. There's one thing we won't. We won't. that I noticed. We... Okay. So there, there was one thing that I noticed specifically because I watched your uh, theory, your live stream the other day where you were kind of watching Star Wars Only's video. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and honestly, like... I'm of the mind where I kind of agree with you that it would be really cool to see more of that Order 66 scene, especially since they um, deleted the stuff with Syndralic. I felt like that could have been a really cool thing included. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm also just of the mind where Star Wars should never really borderline go towards like R-rated kind of area or like super gory just because, sure. you know, I always think back to George just constantly saying, this is for kids. Yeah, so yeah. even though there's some stuff that is PG-13 and there is some stuff that goes darker, I feel like there should always be something there that's accessible to kids. Right. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where my um, mind is at. Um, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, do you have more? I mean. Oh, you got more. I, okay. All right. <laughs> Expound I mean, on I the point, yeah, because I, I feel like yeah. you're not finished with your point, right? You, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't on this specific thing. I said I started going to like a bunch of other stuff in my mind because I'm I'm one of those fans where um where I don't venture outside of the timeline between Phantom Menace to um to Return of the Jedi. So I don't I don't even watch The Mandalorian. I don't oh, wow, watch really? Rebels. Because to me, like, it's inevitable that something's going to connect later on. And so it's more right. of just not hyping myself up for something that could possibly disappoint me. So it's okay. more of, like, staying within the bounds of what I know is going to, like, make I me see. feel safe. <laughs> Got you. Okay. So you're, 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 you're smitten with one to six and you're like, I don't want to do anything to mess it up possibly or... Yeah, I I used to be very much excited about everything that was coming. Um, but then I remember I remember it was like 2018 when all when all the big fandoms that I was a part of suddenly like not the great stuff was coming out. And so and so then it kind of became the sort of thing where like maybe I should kind of maintain my expectations. I should kind of like stick with more the timeline yeah. that I that I can kind of yeah. grasp. <laughs> Have you seen the Clone Wars? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm judging by your shirt. So I would say go watch Rebels. Um, it was. I know what happens. I know what happens in all of okay. it. And I've seen okay. clips. So it's not okay, like I'm completely fine. oblivious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then you're fine. Yeah. Did you, did, you, did you see the sequels? I saw episode seven and episode eight. After episode eight, I just decided not to see episode nine. Okay. Um, even though, again, I know what happens. It, right. I'm. Yeah, I just choose not to watch the stuff that I feel like I'm not really going to enjoy, you know, just not putting my attention towards stuff that that I don't feel like I'm going to ultimately be happy with. Um, yeah, I feel that. But okay. still keeping myself informed so that I know kind of like what's going on. She, well, why are you why did you volunteer to be on here? You don't really disagree with us at all. That's why I put that that's why I put down there like maybe, sure. Okay. I don't right, know. Right, okay. okay, so I'll, let me talk about the the Anakin killing um, Order 66 scene. So I think if it's done within the confines of what George created in all of Star Wars, I mean, even in episode four, we see Obi-Wan uh, 
take off the arm of the dude in the cantina and there was just blood mm -hmm. splattered all over the place. Um, but I mean, in Revenge of the Sith, we've seen, you know, Dooku lose his hands. We see him lose his head. We see so many other things. I mean, we see Grievous's organs uh, kind of explode. Um, Anakin gets chopped into pieces and burns alive. I mean, if we can work within those confines, I think it could work. I mean, you know, seeing like someone get stabbed through the chest or something isn't anything oh, that's out of the realm of what he created. I I look at um, I look at ratings because I remember you brought up how like every Star Wars movie is PG thirteen. It's it's not it's the only. Not. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's Revenge of the Sith, and then the sequels are PG thirteen. But I feel like and if, the spinoffs. Yeah. Yeah, and and the spinoffs. I feel like if Star Wars was, if all those movies were released today, I feel like Disney would have marked them as PG thirteen. Pro probably. I. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, I Darth mean, Maul like getting sliced in half. I mean, it's, I mean, plus like cut, he cuts off in the second one. He goes crazy on the sand people, dude. Like he yeah. goes oh, nuts yeah. on the sand. Yeah. yeah, like there's no way. I that's mean, not it cuts PG -13. away very quickly, but. I mean, he literally comes out of the thing, and the first thing he does is drop heads. I, so I don't know. I saw like... that movie when I was like two or three years old. So what? either I had very bad parents, or I was just like had a very yeah. strong stomach. Because I also watched Revenge of the Sith when I was six years old. It was probably my first PG thirteen movie, and I remember my I remember because it was you know the first PG thirteen one. My parents mm. sat me down. And they were like, "Okay, if anything comes up that's scary." Or uncomfortable for you we're gonna turn it off and of course yeah. six-year-old me having been waiting for this film for so long i was like no i'm not going to show any weakness and so <laughs> i remember being and the thing is that i was a huge padme fan as a yeah. child so like me seeing too. that scene yeah seeing that scene where he force chokes her i i literally was just like what is happening i don't understand like six-year-old brain getting traumatized and then watching oh, no. him light on fire i was like oh my oh, god no. <laughs> so <laughs> is that really just... worse than what we might see in uh the temple you know what i mean i mean i uh... mean depends it, it depends on on what it is that they filmed i don't think that they probably filmed anything too dark yeah. Um, especially since it doesn't seem like they actually filmed anything where it was, you know, him actually killing children. It doesn't yeah. seem like they yeah, actually filmed anything like that. that. No. So, yeah. If I could just interject for a second, because I know you, you know, sort of got some beef for this, and this is sort of what she's talking about, right? Is like the video and the, the drama about that. I remember I said on a stream, I think it was like last Thursday or Friday, I was like, look, you know, if theory can't say it, I'll say it. Screw them kids. I want to see him cut. I want to see little limbs <laughs> flying all over. Like, look, here's the thing. I want to say, to be, and just being honest, um, to me, I've always said uh, it's a movie. You know what I mean? It goes back to the, the discussion, uh, and I know Star Wars is, is way different than a Tarantino movie, but it goes back to like that discussion that like Tarantino had famously with that one uh, film critic where she was talking and trying to say that like, oh, well, you're doing stuff that's going to affect people in real life and there's all this real life stuff. And it's like, no, like just period. No, not at all. Like we're talking about the movies. It's fun to see these crazy things. I mean, and Hayden Christensen himself said boo to that kid to get that kid to do that because it's hilarious. I mean, he prequel memes goes nuts on the memes with Anakin taking out the younglings. Like, have you ever seen the funny memes of like, yes. oh, these these kids are acting up and then the babysitter calls <laughs> Anakin? Yes. I mean, I don't think laughing at that meme means I'm a horrible what? person. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I have a twisted personality, but uh, I don't know. I, I want to I wanna stick, stick my flag in the sand and say uh, I'm totally okay with uh, all of that horrible stuff that people got mad at you about. No, I think I think it comes from mainly the fact that, um, well, first of all, I'm a drama major in college, okay. so I'm hoping to someday become an actor. And I grew up in Los Angeles and I grew up around the film industry. So kind of coming from that sort of mindset of understanding kind of the logic behind it and the sort of business. And I mean, I have family members who work for Disney. I have close family cool. friends uh, who worked on the sequels, who work at Lucasfilm currently. and. Um, and so, you know, even though I do have that sort of irrational, like very passionate fan fandom mind where I'm like, oh, I want this or I want that or I hate this, I hate that. I also try to come at it from a very logical perspective of, well, what are they doing? Like what's going on behind the scenes? And I do, I do, you know, I watch this every week and I and I kind of keep up with the sort of 
um, idea that maybe there is some stuff happening behind the scenes. Like, I don't doubt that at all, especially considering the finances that ended up like the, the very public financial le- records that have kind of followed the sort of decline mm. with uh, box office returns uh, with and the new Disney movies and trending. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, so, you know, I try to balance the two, even though that can be kind of difficult, you know, being, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Look, so being a Star Wars fan is tough. Like, w- that's literally. W- yeah, people love you. Oh my gosh! You I, might I have, yeah, you it. might have to come back every week now. Yeah, I think you're, oh you're definitely gosh. getting I'd be, some sims. I'd I'd be honored. I I can't see the comments right now because I don't know how to work this. Um, yeah. but that's so sweet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you don't need no. to read comments. Comments are. <laughs> I, I know I'm kind wild. of happy. I'm kind of happy because um because you know being being on this live stream every single week, I do see some of what the comments say. And so I'm like, maybe it's better if I just don't read, just in case. They're, they're usually saying that I'm right yeah. and and that uh you know theory is wrong. So yeah. They're, oh they're yeah, definitely. Little, yeah. Every every time I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Well, I think uh I answered your question i guess or we debated something yeah uh, is there anything you want to argue anything else uh, yeah anything else that's uh, on your your mind if anyone else wants to come on i mean the only other i mean the only other interesting thing that i can think of right now is that um i am currently living with somebody who has never seen star wars she doesn't know anything at all so you get to go through it and like show her oh yeah and we've been going in chronological order including clone wars so we nice. just finished Clone Wars and we're doing Revenge of the Sith this weekend. And it's really funny because we've been keeping track of her um of her predictions as we go. Cause she she didn't realize until more until the Mortis arc that Anakin was Darth Vader. He she thought the entire time that Anakin was Darth Vader's father and that he was then Luke's grandfather. Oh, cool. Um and so now she's like, okay, Padme's gotta be pregnant at some point. Like th- like let's hurry up, let's go. <laughs> and um yeah, it, you I should mean, record some of her uh, reactions. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd like be fun content. Yeah, we thought we thought about doing that, but uh, she she very much doesn't really take much stuff seriously. We'll be watching, and every time somebody will be like, "What was that?" She'll be like, "Your mom." And so, so we think like maybe maybe people wouldn't be very. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Here, let, let, let's have you answer this one. Do you think the Ahsoka show will have Ezra? Wait, are you going to watch the Ahsoka show? Yeah, what's your deal you don't with the Ahsoka show? Out of the, you don't want to watch any of the new stuff. Yeah, I'm said. like really upset all of a sudden. Mm. I I don't know. I go back and forth on this also because my dad is a huge Mandalorian fan. He really likes it. And <laughs> what? I've kind go of dad. had to... Yeah, I, right? How, I've kind how of had you let to... your dad down like that? I mean, especially because Star Wars is all he about family. He hadn't seen Clone Wars until I forced him to watch it. Oh, okay. He right. he watched. I forced him to watch Cl- Clone Wars because I knew that Mandalorian season two would have a bunch of different like Clone Wars callbacks. So I made him watch it. And so then when he got to Mandalorian season two, he'd be calling me every single um, every single week, being like, "Did you see that this person was on?" Or and um, and of course, like I still would have been keeping up and stuff. But um, I'm not sure if I'm going to watch it. I'm definitely going to keep up with it, and I'm most likely going to watch clips because I. Cause I was definitely in the camp of wanting Rosario Dawson to play um, Ahsoka, Ahsoka for the, yeah. for the longest time. Have you seen time. her? Have you seen that episode? The Jedi? I haven't seen that episode, but there was oh, a, man. there was a YouTube channel. There was a YouTube channel that posted every single clip, every single scene that she showed up in. And I watched all of it. So I, yeah. so I have seen every single like shot that there was yeah. of her in well, it. I would just say as a Clone Wars fan, if you're a fan of Dave, uh, this was his episode, you know, written and directed. And I think it's a standalone piece of art and you should check it out. Yeah. My dad, just my dad, one really episode. Wants, yeah, my dad really wants me to watch it because uh, his fraternity brother is a VFX editor on that show. So he's That's very fantastic. much like, you have to watch it. Dude, um, what is going You are just, I just feel like just make your dad happy and just go watch it. Just watch, just watch it with him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like feel like I need to reach out to your dad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I feel like he needs a friend. He actually, um, I think, I don't know. He's once, once I got him into Clone Wars and he started learning more about the lore, he started watching more Star Wars YouTube. And um, he did watch some of your stuff, Theory. I don't know if he ended up making it to your channel um josh but um 
but it's possible. So, so it's very possible that he'd be like, Lauren, what did you do? You need to do this now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Rob Slack is happy that you came on. Uh, we also got a confirmation that someone uh, reached out to Star Wars only and uh, he's, he's too busy kickboxing with a uh, photocopy of my face. I do have uh, I do have Star Wars Santa, I think, on the line if you want to give him a shot. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think I don't think it would be impossible for you guys to get Star Wars only on here just because I think about there's this yeah. there's this channel called Anomaly Inc. Um, and he's very much complete opposite of Star Wars only in the way that he handles himself. And um, and Star Wars only uh, shows up to his uh, live streams and he's they seem to have a good back and forth. So it might not be impossible. Cool. Wasn't something that I was really gunning for in the long <laughs> run, but, uh, you know, it's <laughs> I won't lose any sleep tonight. Let's just say that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Um, well, it was a pleasure talking with you. And uh, if you'd ever like to come back, we'd love to have you. And oh, that's so sweet. People love you already, so <laughs> that's great. That's the that's the sweetest. I I'd love to come back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I love to come back if you guys cool. ever wanted me to come back i don't know how that would work but uh like how would i just would like i would just like shoot you like a uh um a link to your dm and uh yeah, by the way if you can send me that link theory i'll send it to santa you have the link do i how oh <laughs> you joined you. how'd you get here how did i get here what are you doing? This? this isn't where i parked my car yeah right <laughs> Okay, well, good luck with your studies, and yeah, maybe we'll catch you next week when we do more of these. Okay, thank you. Thank right, you. Cool. Yeah, it was nice Bye. to meet you. Bye. It was nice to meet you guys, too. All right, cool. Let me send this over to She's so sweet, dude. Star Wars Santa. Yeah, she was really sweet. So nice. she, was, yeah. she was nervous, but she did great. I really loved her. She watched the machete cut of Star Wars. Episode. I am your father. I do like the machete cut, actually. What is that? Oh, it's like... It's like an order that the, that you you're supposed to watch the movies in. So I think it goes like episode three, then episode four, then you go back to episode one or something. It's like a really crazy order, but uh, apparently it's real, real cool. <laughs> I think I think the go to here is to have mainly girls come on. Honestly, you might. I be really right. can't see. Yeah, I can't see women being um, rude or you know over the top or just. Uh, mean or anything like that yeah man um that's not a girl that's a man that's a no woman. i'm not <laughs> what's hey, up santa? santa hey how are you guys hey uh wow i'm honored uh people started contacting me say hey theory wants you to come on and talk so uh sure. thanks josh thank you theory it's good to talk to you guys good to talk yeah, to man. you too man uh, you got the floor. So, what, what would you like to discuss? Yeah, Santa, I know you have a lot of disagreements with me. And I know you have a lot of disagreements with uh, theory about the sequels. And we just kind of wanted to have people on that had these disagreements. We wanted to give voice to some of the other opinions out there. And I think you're the guy for it. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Look, uh, as you can see, uh, I've been around for a while. Uh, so, I remember my first Star Wars experience in, uh, when I was 10 years old. Summer of my 10th birthday, I got to go see Star Wars in the theater, 1977. So uh, that was uh, the very first memory I have. And, of course, it's been with me the, uh, my entire life. And uh, th when the sequels came, uh, I was super excited. But I think everybody was in uh, The Force yeah. Awakens. And it, just personally for me, uh, the character of Rey uh, connected to me. And uh, like you, Theory, uh, it has very personal meanings to me. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was, I was, uh, some other kids took me out in the woods and uh, beat me up, left me bloodied and laying in the woods. Uh, I had to walk home. I was about, uh, about eight years old. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm 53 now. And those, uh, those kind of scars stay with you. And um, when I saw uh, Ray and uh, her character and just, uh, Having to be good, all right. She she has this moral goodness in her, uh, this compass, moral compass, uh, right uh, uh, over wrong. And for me, 
uh, I always wanted to champion the kid that couldn't help himself. The kid that uh, maybe was uh, teased or bullied. Uh, of course, I didn't have that voice until I was older. And when I saw Ray stand up for like even BB-8, right? Uh, BB-8, she rescued from the guy there uh, it, uh, when she first met him. And then yeah. it, it carries through. And uh, she has a bit of a, a naivete that uh, she thinks she could make things better just by uh, showing people or talking to people. Uh, she did that with Kylo. She... Uh, tried it, it, when she went uh, to to meet him uh, it, that she could just tell him, "Hey, uh, you should come this way," and he would do it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that didn't work out. And uh, so, constantly met with resistance, but her hope and her goodness remains. Uh, so, for me, her character connected uh, very well, deeply emotionally, and it ties back to when I was eight years old getting beat up. Um, and, and wishing that I could be, uh, stronger, wishing that I could do something about it, but just not right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, so I love her. I absolutely love Ray's character. And I know she gets a lot of, she gets a lot of, uh, heat based on, uh, the powers, how, how they came about. Yeah. And, uh, I've, I've engaged in so many debates with so many people, uh, who, uh, put her down for being. Uh, Mary Sue, or that she has no flaws, or that she uh, didn't take any losses. But when I watch those movies, I see her take loss after loss after loss, and uh, and, and go against uh, hardship after hardship, and uh, just searching for that place to belong, searching for her family, searching for uh, that that root. And uh, and she doesn't truly find it. I mean, Finn is there for her. He's really the only person who uh, cares more about her. And uh, and then by the time we get to rise, of course, she realizes that is her family. The so for me, uh, my my heart connected to her, and um, for me, it's a very personal thing. Yeah. You really explained some things that I didn't uh, pay too much attention to, uh, so I appreciate that for enlightening me a little bit. And um, as for your story, I, I what you went through is bullshit, man. I, I no one yeah. deserves that. And I'm I'm glad that you're here today, and you're you know, a stronger man. Yeah, well, thanks. Your experiences. Yeah. Well, you know, I know, I know that uh, <laughs> like you went through some hardships as a kid as well. We all did. Uh, we all you've did. gone through some. Yeah, we all have. You're exactly yeah. right. And 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 it's it's things like Star Wars that gave me that escape, and you know I had to go those years where there was no Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> like there was no Star yeah. Wars for, for decades. And when the prequels came out, I was a huge defender, huge defender of the prequels just because I was so excited to have Star Wars. Yeah. But then over time, they lost their luster, and uh, I lost my joy for Star Wars uh, because of the prequels. And I really? just couldn't okay. watch them. I couldn't watch them. There's, uh, it, they became difficult for me, and for many reasons. Uh, I didn't like, I didn't like C three PO uh, having his head tossed about. Right. I didn't like uh, R two D two having thrusters, and then where did they go? I didn't like uh, yeah. many of the characters. Uh, and, and the more it broke down the harder it was for me to watch and mm -hmm. much like what we've seen here with the sequels where people, and you know, even you theory and, and Josh, uh, you come out of the theater thinking, wow, that wasn't so bad. And then as it sinks in and as you get to talking to other fans and you start to share these things, uh, the cracks start opening and then they become crevices and the great big canyons. Yeah. And for me, uh, I still have a bit of an issue with the prequels. Uh, the, the, but the, the, the uh, Clone Wars animated series uh, helped me a lot, yeah. uh, a, a tremendous amount, and uh, for for just me personally. And then uh, when the when the sequels came out, it reinvigorated a love, an yeah. absolute love for Star Wars that I I have now. It's a passion, and uh, I was able. The cool thing is, I've got a kid who's who's a college uh, in college. She's twenty, and cool. uh, I was able to share those with her. Uh, she was growing up, right? Dad and daughter being able to go oh, see Star Wars together, and uh, the sequels are her favorite. So, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I'll challenge you. Why wouldn't it be mine? <laughs> yeah, no. well, I'm, I'm glad it is. Yeah. I'm, it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The, Couple things the original I, I, trilogies are really still my heart, right? Because I was a 10-year-old boy right. sitting in the theater. But yeah. but uh, my daughters both love the sequels, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be there with them. Yeah. More power to them and more yeah, power man. to you. Um, Thanks. A couple things with the – you mentioned a lot of the flaws with the prequels, and I understand they had flaws. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think they all did. Um, yeah. I think you had a maybe a closer – relative connection to Ray and the sequels. And maybe that's possibly a reason that you liked it more for me. I had the same sort of a connection with Anakin and with mm -hmm. Luke. And I think yeah. that's why I connected so strongly with those in essence. Cause I mean, if I didn't connect with those characters, I wouldn't really, the whole story is kind of out the window. It's like, whatever, I don't care about these people. I'm not invested. So I feel like maybe one reason that you really enjoy it so much is the same reason I enjoy it or anyone enjoys it is because we're so invested in the characters. And I'm glad that you got to find that in the sequels, Whereas you couldn't find that in the prequels, um, and then the originals were just you know the originals, and then they you didn't really. Well, I really want to. I, I want to personally thank you, uh, Theory, because uh, with uh, the Mandalorian uh, season two finale, look, uh, Luke was never that uh, emotional draw to me. Right, I didn't have the connection to him. I mentioned about Ray, and I didn't yeah. have her when I was a kid. Yeah. But uh, Star Wars was an escape for me, and uh, so were comic books, right? I was a big Superman guy, big DC guy, yeah. uh, escaped into fantasy, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and all that kind of stuff when I was a kid. Cool. Uh, but uh, I didn't have that emotional connection to Luke. And, and seeing your reaction, uh, and, and kudos to you, man, uh, for, for letting that, because it let me see that, wait, uh, this is a personal like this. This guy has a personal connection to Luke that I don't have. Mm -hmm. And so when Last Jedi comes about or even The Force Awakens comes about and he doesn't have that role that you expected. Um, it, for me, it wasn't an emotional connection. Right. When I see Luke, I'm, I can make the connection to how he's there. Uh, I, I can spend time with it and, and kind of understand what they're telling. Uh, but I wasn't disappointed by Luke. Mm -hmm. Um but when I saw you, I was like, wait, uh, and a light bulb came on and I said, I get it. Right. I yeah. get it. I understand. I truly understand now uh, why people are so upset about yeah. how Luke was treated. Uh, I, I don't share that. But yeah. uh, at the same time, I have uh, <laughs> compassion for those that do. You know, if and, I could... and you did the same. Sorry, you did the exact yeah. same thing for me just now with, with Ray. And I will Thank say you. this, I want to I want to just pick up on that because Santa, I know, you know, you and I've had, uh, you know, our disagreements throughout the years of, uh, you know, how, how does one do the content thing and handle? I think one of my struggles and I think some of the things that you and I have disagreed on is how do I personally handle my own disappointment without allowing my disappointment to be the whole thing of the content? I, I know there are people like you out there. I know you watch theory stuff. I know you watch my stuff. And I want to give people the content that's going to make them happy, but I also have to be true to myself and I have to be true to my own opinions. And so I think what I'd like to ask you is what do you think about that situation? Do you have any thoughts on how we can, I think that uh, having you on right here is literally doing a lot of value and, and maybe bringing a lot of that perspective out to people. But I guess I just wanted to ask you personally, like here and now, like, you know, because we have had these disagreements, what do you think of that? What do you, in your opinion, is there stuff that theory and I should be doing differently? I'm not saying we would even agree with you, but I'd love to hear what you think, you know? Well, first of all, Josh, I came to Pittsburgh to take you to lunch and I still owe you a lunch. So one day <laughs> you've got to let me take you to dinner. You've got to let me uh, uh, give you some love that way. Uh, but no, I, I think, I think you're on the spot right now. Uh, and I've been spending, I spent a lot of time, after the sequel, searching out folks that could help explain to me why they hated them. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time looking. And Josh, you have been that anchor for me to help me see like a reasoned approach. There's this uh, mental thinking through it and, and being able to understand uh, uh, both sides of the conversation. You have your own personal connection to it. And certainly I saw you and Al kind of, you know, <laughs> oh, you you kind of let it go one evening, but that's you know I I understand that that's that's great and that's great content, but it's also uh, saying hey you know I don't share these thoughts 
I, mean, I can't uh, express them myself, but I don't think it's fair to silence that part of the fandom uh, because uh, you disagree with them. Uh, in fact, you know, I do a show every week with a guy who disagrees with me. He hates the Last Jedi, and uh, and is I it Callus? Is it Callus? <laughs> no, no i you know I've been talking to Callus, and hopefully Lord Callus and I will be doing a show together soon. Yeah. Uh, we've done is a couple Bert? of shows together, but uh, no, it's it's a magic maker from Thor Skywalker's uh, Discord. Okay. Cool. And uh, Thor Skywalker, of course, no fan of the sequels, no fan of of uh, the Last Jedi, especially. And uh, a magic maker reached out to me and said, "I need to understand this more because he has a young daughter, uh, uh, preteen, uh, who who loves it, but his heart was broken. His heart was broken by the Last Jedi, and uh, he didn't know what to do. And so he and I have a weekly show." And we're able to bring in that perspective from one side and the, and the other. Mm. Uh, and I think that's important, Josh. Uh, I totally get where you're coming from. And I love you, man. I really do. I love you too, brother. I, think, I know. I know. I, <laughs> I think sometimes you don't think I do, but I do. No, I do. I do. But, but uh, I absolutely think that it's important for the fans uh, to get together and reach out. Make an effort. Right? Make an effort. You guys are doing uh, – brilliant thing this evening and and, and really my I, I i can't thank you enough for allowing me this opportunity to say hey uh but this is what you need to do this is it i think so too i yeah. think so too yeah i think instead of us you know just having like a an echo chamber of what we think you know, and josh and i we we disagree but we don't really disagree all that much it's yeah. you know <laughs> and when we do <laughs> yeah and when we do disagree it's not even like it's that vast or you know that much of a, a contrast so it's really great to have you know someone like you that could enlighten me on why you enjoy the the sequels yeah. and while it may not be for me like the prequels wasn't for you i can appreciate that you love it i can appreciate that you connect with it and i can see why you connect with it yeah yeah, yeah. and, it's and, and I, I think that's what it's all about well, you really helped me see, like, it's an emotional thing, right? When when yeah. Star Wars became a place for you to emotionally connect to somebody and have somebody that you can uh, vicariously live through, you can, yeah. uh, you know, go through these stories uh, with that in your head and, uh, and, and truly, like, feel like you have this connection to that character. Not that yeah. you are that character, maybe when you're playing, but at the same time, you have this emotional connection and you hurt when they hurt. You're happy yeah. when they're happy. Yeah. And for me, my heart broke when Ray's heart broke, right? My heart flew when Ray's heart flew. And yeah. I, I just, I was on the ride with her. And, uh, you know, uh, and I can appreciate that that's an individualistic thing. And and, and truly, uh, theory, I, sometimes I get frustrated, and just to be honest. Sometimes I get frustrated because, you know, you let things through the emotion and through your own uh, lens Rhetoric. come out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's fair. And that's, I think, what Josh was just saying, like, but how do you as a content creator express yourself in truth, in truth mm. right? You need to be able to express yourself in truth. There's no, yeah. nobody should ask you or Josh or anybody else for that matter, Jeremy or, or anybody to, to not be themselves. You should be yourself. Uh, but I think it's really important, especially at this time, in, both in our country. And I know you're Canadian. Uh, <laughs> I work with Canadian uh, folks for my job. But uh, cool. uh, and I, I, uh, I've been to Montreal a few times. I love Montreal. It's a beautiful city. If you've not been there, it's gorgeous. But you, you've um, been there every year, Santa. Come on. What's that? Yeah, you're every, aren't you everywhere every year? We're all over the world. Yeah, Santa's all around the world. But I, I'm just saying, uh, you know, <laughs> It's it's really good that um, every now and then we have to invite pe people who disagree with us, be it uh, politically, uh, religiously, uh, you know, economically, whatever. We need to uh, have that diversity in our lives, and uh, and that's what drew me to Josh's channel and why I've been such a huge supporter is just that there's a there's a place for the dialogue. And not to be put down, you know, you don't, I, I know, I know, you know, but I have been put down so many times that I'm not a true Star Wars fan or that I don't understand Star Wars. I don't understand if, yeah, if you like The Last yeah. Jedi, then you don't understand right. uh, Star Wars. Right. That yeah. stuff happens to be every single day and I have to put up with it. And, and I have to try, I try to defend 
the sequels and say, here's what I, and then I just get berated and it's not, it's not fun. Yeah, man. right. Yeah. It's not fun. But you want to talk about what you love. You really do want to talk about this passion you have for Star Wars. And you shouldn't be put in a place where you feel like your opinion is being squashed. And I know many people who uh, disagreed with the sequels, who, who d- uh, disliked them, felt that way as well. They felt like, hey, I'm being called names. I'm being to- told that I'm, you know, closed minded and a bigot or whatever else because yeah. I don't like these movies. Um, it's very similar I don't think thing. Took, yeah, I don't think people took time to to uh, to listen. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, you know, as a sequel supporter, somebody who loves them, I try to express express why I love Ray, and it becomes an absolute beatdown. I yep. can't do it. <laughs> yep. No, I, I dude, yeah. I feel you, and I know you and I have talked about this before. That's not and, right? Yeah, it's not right, and I think that's one of the things. I think this is a great first step, and it's like. You know, because we have t- talked about it before, and it's not—it's not like it's something I can ignore. Like I'm aware of it, and I know what it is, but it's a struggle because I think there is that there's a certain like our authenticity is is literally currency in some ways for us, right? So it's like it's a really interesting thing. You have to be authentic, but yeah. I also recognize that, like, dude, I am a fanboy. Like when I get like butthurt about stuff, like the Wandavision thing, like. <laughs> I totally understand. Like, I get it. And I know what it does to the community. I understand. But at the same time, I need, you know what I mean? Like, I need to be able to still be me and express myself. I, I So, um, yeah, yeah, man, I don't know exactly what the answer is. I'm sorry that you get beat up like that about Ray. I mean, frankly, I've probably done it a little to you, you know? So oh, you're- I've probably <laughs> done it too. But I would say on the, on the same side, like I've been called alt-right. I've been called... Yeah. Uh, which isn't true. And I've been called, you know, right. sexist or, you know, uh, racist or whatever. It, it, so it's like we get it on the other side, too, if we don't yeah. like the characters. And I think it should just stop in general. It's like, look, you like these movies. I don't like these movies. I like these movies. You don't like those movies. Whatever, dude. It's still under the same house of Star Wars. Whether you want to call it Star Wars or not Star Wars. or I don't see the sequels as part of George Lucas's story. But that doesn't mean that it, it, it should put down your love for them. Right. You know, I, I would still go go out and grab a beer with you. I'd still go hang out with you and, and, and call you my buddy, regardless if you think Ray's cool or not. Like, I, I'm not like that, you know, and I, I just feel like this whole hating or, or gatekeeping in general shouldn't yeah. exist. But at the same time, I feel like it's hard for me to. Because my channel has grown so big to be able to 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 say what I want to say without it being thrown in one direction or the other. So it's, it's kind of like I don't. Like, what do I say, you know? Well, that's what I like, think what Josh I was asking, right? Like, you have to be true to yourself. And, and, and uh, you know, you are who you are because of who you are. And 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 there's no re- – Star Wars Theory wouldn't be the channel it is if you weren't you. And right. you can't be somebody else. You have to be you. Uh, and it's the same for Josh. I, 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 I may pick on Josh. I have a lot of fun uh, picking on Josh and – Sometimes I don't know if he, if you know I'm I'm picking, but <laughs> sometimes I think you're being. But but at the same time, it's fun when you're friends and you can you know when when you're close friends with somebody and you can you know take them to the woodshed a little bit. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, because <laughs> you're friends, right? Yeah, you know. You know mm-hmm. uh, but it, it's done in in a place from uh, love and respect, and yes. uh, you can you can rib each other. But when it gets so serious. Uh, the the gatekeeping in the community is terrible. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, and I can't, and I, I tried to express this before, right? Like sequel supporters have been terrible to sequel haters. Yeah, man. And I'm a sequel supporter. I love them. Uh, but in sequel haters have been terrible to sequel supporters. Dude, it's yeah. so it's bad. Absolutely terrible. And, and yeah. Like you guys, right? I've got a tiny little channel. I've got like 214 ch- uh, subscribers, right? Probably more Probably now, little, Santa. More, more yeah. after this stream. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I hope so. I yeah. hope so. But at the same time, I, uh, I get I get death threats. You know, people tell me go kill myself, right? Because they it's it's the internet. And Josh right. was making mm-hmm. fun of it this morning. Like it's the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, but at the same time, we're friends. We're buddies. We're we're Star Wars nerds, right? We yeah. love this franchise, and the place of love that we have for it, it also leads a lot to the uh, passion. And when that passion comes across as hate, 
then we need to maybe check ourselves. Yeah, I agree. Right? You said, bro, you come off a little bit tough there. Lighten up. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel I agree. That. Yeah. I, I feel, feel like some of the flinging, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, but like you were saying, like some of the slinging from the sequel supporters and the sequel retractors, I feel like really, this is something I've tried to be vocal about. I think it's the people within those same communities that aren't self-policing that actually are causing a lot of these problems. It's like the people that are willing to be quiet when they know their friends are acting a little out of control because yeah. frankly, they don't like the buttholes on the other side. And that goes yeah. for both sides. And it's like, yeah. it's just absurd to me because I know a lot of really reasonable people that I've talked to that are either uh, connected to the fandom menace or perhaps connected to, you know, really anti fandom menace, like pro sequel people. And it, it, it always seems to be the same thing when I get them personally speaking to me, like on a person to person basis, they admit, yes, the people in my community are doing this, that second and the third, and it's out of control. But then when it comes time to like say something on a public forum, nobody shows up man because everybody wants to keep the cloud everybody wants to keep things going the way that it is and i think that's the problem one of my biggest problems with people within the fandom menace is that they haven't self police they haven't called out some of the ridiculous stuff that has happened it's the same thing yeah. with the sequel supporters they haven't called out some of the ridiculous behavior that's happening so yeah yeah when you like, like uh, ray is a is a really good uh lightning rod uh for that uh it, because when she gets called a mary sue it gets my blood boiling right it makes mm. me mad because i love her yeah. and i feel like i need to come to her defense sure. uh and then a lot of the defenses sound to me right i hear uh dog whistles from people who are maybe sending a, a, a sexist message sure. and i have to check i have to check myself i have to say wait they're not just because they don't like Ray's character, just because they think she's a Mary Sue, doesn't make them sexist. Right, stop, right. right? You gotta stop. Yeah. Listen to them. Understand yeah. why they think that. And maybe they should listen to you why you don't think that. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you can say, you know what? I didn't see it that way. I still don't agree with you, yeah. but uh, it's been nice to have this talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Oh, That'd be cool, man. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, Santa lives at the North Pole and there's room on the nice list for everybody. And I'm constantly <laughs> trying to put people on the nice list. And they keep putting themselves back on the naughty list. And some of them know who they are. They're listening right now. And they they, they love being on that naughty list. They're going to get a lump of coal. Some people just months. can't get off the naughty list, Santa. You know what I mean? Some people just can't get off, you know? <laughs> Stan, oh, you've, well, got, you've got a ton of subs now, apparently. People are oh, saying everyone's going to sub to you, and that's great. That's oh, amazing. God, God bless you guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. I, I, I actually I, I, really – you do some really great commentary, too. I remember after I complained about Solo 2, you did a live stream that was almost rebutting my point, and yeah. uh, I, I was so salty because it was so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, I'll never bring this live stream up again. I did just now. <laughs> but, um, no, Santa does great work, guys. He's a very kind soul and does good content, so you should definitely check him out. I've, and I've, I've, got a, I've got a bag of toys I'm going to give away. I've got all kinds of Star Wars prequel-era to toys – that I'm going to give away when I get to a thousand subs. So uh, if I can get nice. there uh, and if you guys could help with that, uh, God bless you. I can't wait to meet you in person one day. Then we That'd give you a, a, yeah. a hug and, and uh, share a drink. And absolutely yeah. brother. Absolutely. Just be, just be fans. A glass That's of milk great. and some cookies. Absolutely. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. You got to remember to leave the cookies <laughs> and milk out for Santa. That's yeah, right. man. <laughs> <We'll do. laughs> absolutely brother <laughs> well it's so great much, talking guys. to you man thanks so much yeah okay. thank, thank you man. see you take care bye bye, -bye. man that was so great that was pretty phenomenal I think this bro. is this is such i think this is this is a great segment yeah it's a great show i'm really glad you just decided to randomly do it because i think that there is a lot of people that i mean that was just so great you know what i mean and and you know santa he was just so honest and like he was, I felt like he's been wanting to say that to you for a long time, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and it was beautiful to, to watch it go down. I felt like you guys connected on a, a really cool level. Was, we did. Was, yeah. It was yeah. really cool, man. I, I really appreciate that. And, um, I, 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 I love this series. I want more of this stuff. So, 
Yeah, man. Out of the darkness, we may have found a, a nice new sort of light. And who knows, man, this could this could go some interesting places. It feels like there's I, I feel the vibe is already a little bit better. I think the, the vibe's chat. good, man. Yeah. I think the vibe's good. I think, you know, if we lead by example and show that you know you can have disagreements in Star Wars and still be buddies. Yeah. And you can explain your points of view, um, then the the minority of people who are on both sides that are very, very angry yeah. uh, will be drowned out. I agree, and then 100%. they'll be like, okay, maybe we don't need to conduct ourselves this way. Maybe we can conduct ourselves a different way. I think that's the whole point because I know there are people out there that aren't even necessarily all in on the negativity, but it just seems like when they look around, that's what everybody's doing. Or maybe you know, there's this weird peer pressure to act that way. And I think there are people actively engaged in like toxicity in this fandom that actually don't even want to be doing it. You know what I mean? And if, the, right. if, if there's another path there and even a cool path, why wouldn't people take it? You know what I mean? At that point, you'd have to love hate more than you love star Wars. If, if you really wanted to go that way, that's the only way I can explain it. So people are saying Chaco is uh, ready to go. Cool. Cool, man. I'm down. I want to know about TikTok, and I'm sure, you know, he's probably got some stuff to say. So, Get him in here. <laughs> All right, DM'd him the link. Super cool. And this is a good way to get, you know, other content creators. Um, some yeah, eyes get on the word them, out know, there. Absolutely. Which, uh, mm -hmm. Depends on what they say. May or not be the best thing for them. But <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nerd theory from a certain point of view. I love that. Yeah, man. Pretty, pretty positive. Pretty positive. Ah. <sighs> I love this. He said, Mark looked different this week. <laughs> <laughs> Santa. Wait a minute. How's it going on? You two are just a mate. All right, send him the link. Should be nice. coming in any minute. Cool, now. cool, cool. Does Chaco? What up? Hello, how's it going? What's up? What's nice up? Nice How you. are you? Uh, I'm doing excellent. Cool. Uh, Ooh, I like yeah, the hat. We we, we uh, asked a whole bunch of people if uh, uh, they know oh, anyone that wants to come hang in. Hang on, I'm I'm also in the live <laughs> or in the the uh, other chat. Do you want me to? Oh, so you're hearing the, the feedback. Got it. And so you do you have a channel or do you have a TikTok? Uh, I do. I have uh, I have both. So I'm Darth Chaco on uh, on TikTok. Um, it's all Star Wars content. And oh. uh, I also have a YouTube channel, which is Darth Chocolate. I mean, really supposed to be Darth Chocolate, but that was taken on TikTok. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> well, do you like Chaco? I mean, Chaco's kind of got a nice ring to uh, it. Chaco or... is better. And I'm, I need to switch everything now. I have to pivot, but it yeah. is it is what it is. So how's your day, man? Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a pretty good day. I just on uh, my Discord server, we just did a screening of uh, The People versus George Lucas because I think that's a fascinating little chapter. It is a fascinating cool. documentary, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we actually just finished that. That's cool. Sweet. So what would you like to talk about? The floor is yours. Yes. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, for, for me... Uh, one of the things that I see happen often in the community, I mean, we, we all know that um, there can be a lot of, you know, hatred and things like that spread or just just 
negativity. And so my channel is all about um, trying to bring that positivity back into, into Star Wars, or at least um, when having your opinion to make sure that your opinion still leaves room for other people to exist. And so that's kind of a big, uh, that's kind of my, my big thing. Um, as far as like coming right. on here with a specific topic, um, I don't have anything like <laughs> uh, off the cuff, but I did recall not too long ago um, on one of your streams, you guys were at asking for people or saying that you couldn't find anyone that enjoyed The Last Jedi, for instance, um, which has slowly crept up my list to becoming my, my number one. So Okay, uh, cool. This, this any thoughts or yeah yeah if you have thoughts or <laughs> all right curiosity sure, why. yeah yeah well look the whole point of getting people on was basically to have them talk about um whether you like me you hate me or whatever in between um to have a face-to-face -face kind of thing you know as, as much as we can you know on the internet yeah so whatever mm, you want to talk okay. about you want to talk about last jedi we talk about last jedi if you want to talk about me we can talk about me if you want to talk about josh we can talk about josh yeah um, i felt like you had uh and i could be wrong i could be misinterpreting but i felt like maybe you had specific criticisms of theory and sort of thought that he was going down a dark path or that he had sort of changed or made some kind of a change that's what i had heard did i did i hear that wrong or well there are, I mean, I've, I've followed Star Wars Theory for, for a long time, um, and I will Thank say you. I've noticed some changes recently. Now, as far as, you know, I've never been one to say that you're toxic or anything like that. Um, that's that's not really my, my shtick, but um, there was particularly, uh, I think about a, a specific moment where I was like, huh, that was interesting. There was the video that you did around Daisy Ridley's interview with uh, Josh Gad, mm -hmm. the Disney lied to us. Right. And in that video, uh, you used a clip of Kathleen Kennedy saying that George, that um, Palpatine was always in the blueprint, right? Right, right. Um, and then use that to compare to what Daisy, Daisy Ridley said, and then use that to say that Disney had lied to us. And right. whether or not... Uh, we could be said we, we lied to is my point was, or the, my point of disappointment was that the two clips were not related. Kathleen Kennedy saying that Palpatine was going to come back as a villain and Daisy Ridley saying that um, she found out before taping episode nine that Palpatine was going to be her grandfather are two separate topics. Correct. Um, so using one to prove the other is misleading. No, it's not misleading because there have been many times when John Boyega even said that they brought Palpatine back out of the blue. Now, so wait, let me if just you ask, watch just my to channel, be clear, you would, you would yeah. know that. So just to be clear, just dark chocolate, just so I could, do you, do you think that Palpatine was always the plan or are you just, are, I, don't, I guess just, just for context, do you disagree with the, the, the actual statement that, that they changed that and that they were moving <clears> stuff or yeah, what's your what's your stance oh, okay. on it? Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with the actual statement. Okay, but if you're gonna present evidence, then that should line up and it should be be true. So, so even my, if they were, yeah. even so if my they, interpretation of that, and by the way, that was actually not one of my favorite uh, videos that Theory's ever done. Just being honest, because I didn't necessarily feel the exact connection as well. But I remember watching the video and thinking. No, 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 that he definitely has a point in that exact example because I remember that interview with Kathy. And by the way, when we were all at Chicago and that happened, when we saw the trailer and Ian, Ian you know, came out, I mean, mm -hmm. it was an incredible moment. But the buzz around the convention center that night was, hey, man, was this really the plan? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, even then yeah. there, like, the whole idea was, is this the plan? Now, Kathy came out and said pretty definitively that it was always the plan. I think she says in some iteration or whatever, so there's a little bit of leeway there. And I know for me personally, I'm just not the type of person to give her a lot of charity. And there are people out there that do give her a lot of charity. But when I watched that video with Theory, I, made, I got the point he was trying to make. I didn't really think it was misleading. And I definitely don't think it's misleading in some of the ways that other YouTubers engage in that same stuff of being misleading. I felt like that video, if I'm being honest, was Theory having a super emotional reaction to mm -hmm. a lot of other things that frankly, 
me personally, I might have snapped out harder on some of the other things, but it was like a straw that broke the camel's back sort of thing. So for me personally, I didn't feel like there was deceit there. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think there was any deceit there. I think um, what I said stood up in a lot of the different videos that I've made regarding what we just heard about John Boyega with that interview that he had. Uh, I forgot which publication it was, but um, like the GQ interview. Yeah, the the big GQ one where he basically yeah. spoke about how Palpatine was literally thrusted in there, and he's like, uh, you know, you just threw him in there to save your own shit, and it's like, yeah, he for said, years I was yeah, defending, yeah, I, I was defending the sequels, and I was defending Disney. I'm like, look, there's going to be a plan. Even with the last Jedi, I'm like, and I was I was sitting in there. I was the first one in the theater and the last one to leave, and I was sitting in there. I'm like, how the hell did, does this make any sense whatsoever? Like, this just didn't feel like Star Wars to me. And then I proceeded to make so many videos about how Ryan Johnson, you can go back and look, Ryan Johnson mm -hmm. is brilliant. He knows what he's doing. Guys, there's a plan to this. Don't lose hope, blah, blah, blah. Now, finally, you know, after five years of that, once I see that from John and then once I see that from Daisy Ridley, yeah, I mean, what, I'm not going to continuously be blind and be like, oh, my God, yes, it's uh, there was a plan. No, there was no plan. And look at the story. There was, it doesn't seem like there was a plan. And that's okay. And that's, and I, I apologize because that's that's not quite the point. I'm not trying to argue that there was a definitive plan. I mean, it seems like there was a plan, and then they changed it. Sure, after yeah. that's Black totally Black fair. Black yeah, Black yeah. I think how, that's a fair. Yeah, how I see it. But um, the argument wasn't whether or not there was a plan. It's that the pieces of evidence produced don't line up as proof. That's all. Uh, I. I don't so know your issue is is your issue is with in the video where I'm discussing the entire uh, interview between Daisy Ridley and Josh Gad about her explaining that there was no plan for Daisy's lineage. Me throwing in the several second segment of Kathleen Kennedy saying that Palpatine was always in the plan uh, are irrelevant. Right. Well, I guess. Yeah. And to expand on that, I guess what I'm curious about and I'm not trying to dogpile or anything, you know what I mean? So just let us know, like if you're Gucci, like if you're feeling comfortable or whatever. But like, I guess like my curiosity is like, why is that specific thing like why is it relevant? triggering for you? I guess it's like, <laughs> it, did you think that maybe he was doing something that other YouTubers do that you definitely don't like? Is that kind of what it was where you were like, oh, he's going down a path I can't follow kind of thing? Uh, exactly. Exactly. It's not that the message was was wrong or that the message was bad. It was that the evidence used to prove the message to support it um, wasn't wasn't quite valid. And so I see that a lot on on a lot of these YouTube channels where the evidence given doesn't actually line forget, up. Forget if I may interject. Forget the other YouTube channels. Forget which, those channels. I'm not them. I'm me. The evidence that I used was from Daisy Ridley's mouth. Yes, and I, I'm referring to the Kathleen Kennedy portion where she said Palpatine returning as a character was part of him. I'm just saying that those two don't line up. But there are, um, I mean, there there are other things that that I've been kind of keeping my my eye on. Um, mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of uh, people, you know, tossing Mark Hamill into the mix and in, in his his thoughts. Now, in his interviews i mean he's kind of made it clear that um a he specifically came out and said that he has not been talked to at all by disney or lucasfilm um telling him what to do or what to say or any, any point uh, and he did come out and say yes i said all these things um but having seen the finished product you know i was wrong he did a whole press conference yeah. about the uh the the director and the jedi um, with Ryan Johnson and um, but I still see that narrative as well popping up. There's actually another interview with Mark Hamill recently where he's even talks about how he doesn't like people using his name to promote negativity. Um, sure. I don't think anybody does though, it. brother. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, look, I, let me just interject for a second here because I think the thing with like, I, 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 I I, I think I get a sense of like where some of your frustration is going, but it just seems like there's this purity test or like this fan war thing that you seem to have a lot of investment, whether positive or negative into. And it seems like you're frustrated that people are using Mark Hamill's words in the fan war. It feels like you're frustrated that 
theory might be engaging in activity that you feel is the fan war, you know what I mean? Like, or whatever. Um, I guess my thing is like, I know for sure that that's not what this guy is doing. And I also know mm -hmm. that this guy gets really triggered by being compared to these other YouTube channels because he's mm. deaf, because he's definitely not. So I think there's a thing happening maybe where your exact issue is actually something that is causing him uh, frustration. And so there might be a gap there for you two to be able to find common ground. But I guess like what oh, I would okay. just ask and you. I, I apologize. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm trying to do at all. No, yeah, no, no problem. It's all I love to hear I, what you think, but, but what I what I'm hearing is, you know, a lot of semantics, a lot of like, you know, you use this clip to this. Like, I didn't use this clip to prove anything. I didn't need to use that clip at all. In fact, I asked my editor when he was chopping up that thing, which really just chopped up a, a little bit because the full thing is a live stream from my gaming channel that you can find to this day. Uh, it's like an hour long, so I chopped it up into like ten. He had chopped it up in ten minutes. I asked him to add that piece in there. And I don't think it's any more relevant or irrelevant. I just think it shows that, you know, um, it's more conducive to my thesis on the fact that I don't think that there was a plan at all for the sequel trilogy and where Kathleen Kennedy is lying through her teeth saying that, oh, Palpatine was in the picture the whole time. I don't, I really don't believe that he was. Um, you know, with first we got The Force Awakens and then that was passed off to uh, Ryan with, with The Last Jedi, which was completed before The Force Awakens hit theaters. And then the, the episode nine wasn't really even a continuation. It was just a, how do I fix episode eight? And I don't think you could even deny this, that they basically took everything from eight and just retconned it. And the whole movie was just kind of hmm. trying to like, like change what? things around. Well, the whole thing with Luke... I mean, he basically, maneuver. that whole Holdo maneuver, they explained everything. It's a one in a million shot. And then the whole thing with Luke, him grabbing the lightsaber mm -hmm. when it's being tossed basically off the cliff or into the fire, that Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. It's like the complete stark contrast of what he was saying in The Last Jedi, and he's now doing it here and saying that, oh, I was wrong. I was this and that. And it's like, well, yeah, that's character why? development. Why? All of it, all character development, all like that? No, 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 no. We 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 watched him in the Last Jedi go from being someone that lost it all. That he was certain. I mean, one of the criticisms I always see is, um, you know, oh, man. Of course, he would see good and Ben. He's the guy that saw good in Darth Vader. I mean, that's addressed in in the film. He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I assumed that I would be able to handle this because I'm the one that that took care of it in yeah, Darth Vader. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. What what happens if? Superman's not strong enough. What happens if the Flash at full speed is not fast enough? That's that's so, that was quite you, yeah. Though. But you don't see Superman walking into talking? his nephew's tent trying to kill him in his sleep, though. Do you think? Uh, I, do you think that because the, there's a lot of people that don't like the Last Jedi? So I'm just curious. Do you think what percentage of the people that do not like the Last Jedi do you think like it or dislike it for the wrong reasons? I don't think there's a wrong reason to dislike a film. I think you can, well, I guess that's not true. You can have uh, your, an opinion that's based off of incorrect or incomplete information. Um, but as far as like, like I honestly don't feel like the majority of fans dislike it, to, to be quite but what honest. Evidence, yeah, what evidence do you have of that? I... Uh, because I'd love to know, because honestly, like what I do for a living is trying to engage in that and try to give an accurate depiction of that. And I tell you now, with absolutely no malice or lie, that I've looked at it, this exact issue about as hard as a human being possibly can. And at best, I can tell you it's incredibly divisive. I think that mm -hmm. if you look at what's going on in the fandom, it's actually perfectly evident that it is divisive. If it wasn't as divisive absolutely. as it was... Well, then I don't really understand what you're saying then, because you're saying that like most fans like it. If it's divisive by definition, that can't be the case. There's a poll that I hosted a month ago, 510,000 votes. Uh, do you like the sequel trilogy? 25% yes, 75% no. And now many people will say, oh, well, you just, you know, you adhere to a toxic fandom and this and that. Okay, well... I mean, 510,000 people, they're all toxic. Well, I mean, 25% of them aren't. And so how do we... And I think that's that's also a misunderstanding, is not liking the sequels doesn't make someone toxic. 
Right. Um, you're free to like or dislike whatever you want. Uh, now, anyone who is attacking anyone else or anyone who is um, trying to present themselves as being as them as being less of a fan or me as being more of a fan. Um, yeah. You know, if, if you, if out of 500,000 people you polled and 25% people did enjoy it. Now, yeah. just to be, just to be clear, the sequels are my least favorite trilogy. I love the last Jedi. Yeah. Um, Force awakens is dead center and rise of Skywalker is dead last uh, for okay. me personally. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a prequel fan. And a huge Legends nerd. My boy. Like, nice. 133 books into Legends. Jaina Solo is my favorite Star Wars character of all time. Nice. Very so, cool. Yeah. Just to put all, all that out there. Yeah. Um, but there's there's just, and I kind of kind of got off track, but there's certain things that, you know, I, I see like what I was talking about with Luke where, you know, you'll see him in The Rise of Skywalker and he says a Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. Right. right, he he did have a turnaround from his character in the mm -hmm. Last Jedi, and that that was the purpose of the Last Jedi. He ended the Last Jedi doing uh, the arguably the most powerful forced act that we've seen in canon. Yeah, and end his his life on his own terms. Yeah, as a hero, and he single handedly saved the entire Resistance and sparked the hope that would bring the Resistance the ultimate victory in the end. Yeah. And so he returned to being that hero. The way I look at Luke in The Last Jedi is like, what if you were the teacher uh, in school, the fun teacher everyone wanted to be in your class and you had a troubled nephew mm -hmm. and you knew you were gonna, you're gonna reach him. You're gonna reach him, you're gonna reach him, you're gonna reach him. Well, let's say he's, you're not reaching him and he's like acting strange. Now, obviously, this teacher can't read its mind, but let's say you go look in its browser history and he's looking up how to make explosive devices or something sure. like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're like, crap. Do I talk to him? Do I call the authorities? Uh, how am I going to talk to his his mom, my sister? Like, I love each and every one of these other kids in the school. Like, well, and in the middle of that, kid walks in. There's an altercation. Teacher wakes up school's already been blown up there's no survivors that would break you i well, love i agree yeah i loved uh season ender of mandalorian you know season two mm -hmm. luke comes in he's just kicking ass you know yeah he picks up you know with grogu he says i will protect him with my life and it's right. a beautiful moment yeah imagine losing grogu Imagine having a school full of kids just like that, where you fought tooth and nail to bring them there. They were the next generation of Jedi. They were the future. You had a personal attachment to your nephew, and you saw he was having trouble. You saw he was struggling with the dark. You saw these flashes. Where, where is your loyalty in that moment? Is it to the Jedi as an organization? Is it to my family? Is it to all of these children who I promise their parents I'm going to protect them? I can see how someone who is on top of the world, just the absolute best, mm -hmm. can hit a point where at their best, they're in a no win. You know, it's possible to make no mistakes and right. still lose. Right. So you figured the best option for him would be to creep up when he's asleep and ignite his lightsaber to kill him. It's like, okay, let, you know, the school, we're, the class time, let, nap time, everybody. Oh, I'm going to go up to Kylo over here and, you know, take a knife and little Kylo wakes up. Oh, my God. Well, of course, his things are going to blow up. There are so many things. Well, the he, real didn't creep up done. To, he didn't creep up to kill him. He went to, to check and see his state because he was seeing the darkness. And then when he, he actually looked he, in his mind. Alon ignited his lightsaber in front of him as he was asleep. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To kill him. Yes. So S I'm saying he did not sneak into the room to kill him. He sneaked in to Yeah. To I agree with that. Mental, to see where but he a was, lot of people have the flashes. Yeah. And look, I think the thing is it's probably just the fundamental, it's probably just gonna come down to a, sort of a fundamental difference about what is acceptable for the Luke Skywalker character in that situation because to me i mean look i totally get what you're saying and like on an intellectual level i can get my i can understand it but to me it's like it's deconstruction and i'm not interested in deconstructing 
Luke Skywalker, particularly not interested in deconstructing Luke Skywalker after waiting 40 years and being teased Luke Skywalker as the antithesis of the first movie. So I personally feel like despite what you're saying, making sense. And for some people totally working, I still just, for me, I'm like, yeah, but that's too cute. That's not what I'm looking for. You so know you're saying I mean? he didn't go there with the intent to kill Kylo. No, that was not the goal. Okay. Of, and of course, we, we see the scene where he's looking at Kylo's mind, and the mm -hmm. sounds that you hear is actually like the same as the Hosnium Cataclysm. Um, so if he sees all this death and destruction around him, and he reflexively ignited his blade, he said it yeah. passed like a like a shadow. Mm -hmm. And for me, man, this is the same lesson over and over again. He's doing better each and every time. When he first went to that dark side cave, Yoda told him, your weapons, you will not need them. Mm -hmm. He's like, screw you, Yoda. And <laughs> he brings a weapon. He True. brought violence in, and he found violence there. Yeah, but he also uh, he, doesn't listen to Yoda. And you know what I mean? He doesn't listen to Yoda, and then he doesn't listen to Ben in the third movie. Ben wanted him to kill Vader, you know? Absolutely. But so, so then we get to, like you were saying, Return of the Jedi. Right. Um, Luke comes in there peacefully. Right, I will not fight you. I'm not going to kill you. Till his friends were threatened. Till the rebellion was threatened. It was that his lightsaber? Yeah. At first, it was it was his his friends. Yeah. Um, then they fight. Well, then he ignites his lightsaber again, and he's in hiding. That's when Vader threatens his sister. Yeah. Now yeah. this is this is Vader. This is his father. This is someone that he actively already sees good in. Mm-hmm. And he still almost bludgeons him to death in rage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because Luke has always been a very reactionary character. Right. Right. You know, when he has the, the vision of his friends being in danger, he falls right then and there. He's like, training, done. I'm going right now. He's always yep. been very reactionary. He's always led with his heart. Yep. I can see that that same guy running into the same situation. And instead of attacking yeah. Like he did before with his father, which he did see light in. I can see him reflexively igniting a blade with Ben, who he doesn't see light in. I also think that him and Ben's relationship is a lot closer. I mean, it's it's Obi-Wan and Anakin again. Obi-Wan could not have brought Anakin out of the darkness. Only Padme would have been able to do that. And Only quite Padme. Well, maybe well, Qui-Gon could have pre prevented, it. It was prevented the <laughs> yeah. fall. Yeah. yeah. No, that's right. actually that's but an interesting don't point. Don't you think yeah. that Luke would, you know, Tim turning his lightsaber on in front of the Emperor of the Galaxy when he's threatening his friends makes sense. It's the Emperor. I don't care about the Emperor. Him turning his lightsaber on his father when his father threatens his sister. Let's be real. He doesn't really know his father. He knows there's, there's good in him, but his love for his father, I don't think, um, outweighs his love for his nephew, who he saw since he was born I and for him to, to go in too. there yeah there's there's too much like and there's and much, going like, back stretching to, like mental to, leaping you have to do you were talking about character development from episode eight to nine in that short time span if he can change his mind and completely do a 180 in that well why can't he learn as you were saying when it comes to the last jedi your weapons you will not need them you know it like why and can't he just and learn that's what from he does that at the end and that's what he does at the end of the film he approaches ben like a true jedi without violence doesn't bring his weapons and he saves everyone and i think that's the that's the whole point that. that's that's what i got my very first watching i i don't know that i would call it a, a stretch but i i think it also harkens back to us as we carry mm -hmm. in with us into the theater what what totally. we have, our expectations, our dreams, and stuff, which you know, it it, yeah. it is what it is. Now it's subjective, and I would never. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate it. I just disagree with it. I just don't see yeah. it. But I can see what you see. I can see how you see it that way. Mm -hmm. I just can't see it from the Luke that I thought I knew growing up, and then him. And you saying like, okay, he walked over there without the intent to kill his nephew, but then it's like, man, Luke wouldn't even have turned that thing on. Whether he saw those visions or not, well, I don't think he would have even ignited that thing. Well, plus, even if he did, like, he's not going to just go live on an island 
like that's the thing that that's I think the I, other I, part of it we yeah can that's the it. other part that i As can't Mark wrap Hamilton, my head around you, you, it's you, like you chill out for eight months you know it's yeah then maybe <laughs> and then you're gucci like you should be good so like i just think frankly and i agree with you guys on that one yeah um my thing my thing about him going to the island is purely a plot device this isn't luke's film this is ray's film and if luke is is around and he's kicking ass she yeah. is unnecessary. They actually talk about the Luke problem where as mm -hmm. soon as he walks in the frame, yep. you're like, oh, forget all these other people. But if I yeah. could, I mean, I just hate that because like people I say the same it. thing about Superman, right? It's like, oh, it's too hard to write a good uh, Superman story. It's like, yeah, if you suck, like yeah. my thing is that's not an excuse to have shabby writing. Like, yeah, is Luke incredibly hard to handle for sure? I thought Ryan Johnson was a genius. You know what I mean? Like, so don't tell me that like you can't handle one of the most iconic characters and you're trying to do all that like don't if you can't get my thing is this if he wanted to be really cute with luke and deconstruct that's totally fine i don't even think he fully goes there i think he literally just does it to mess with people because i don't think it actually fully deconstructs luke like it's just it feels just like it was subverted for being subverted that's how i personally feel about it Okay, uh, but do you, I mean, the word subverted is often used in conjunction with Ryan Johnson. So I guess my question to that is, we were told this in The Force Awakens. We were told, you know, J.J. wrote, Luke is, is gone. Luke Skywalker is missing. Is he's vanished, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Han Solo tells us that he started a new Jedi school and one of the kids ruined it. He felt guilty and he mm -hmm. walked away. Mm -hmm. um how is that not you, you know like i i feel like Rand johnson was handed this story yeah so, I, mean, hey, I agree with you but that's not gone. what you were talking about just a second ago you were talking about how you can't handle luke as a character in a scene by scene basis no no, is... no 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 I, i'm 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 saying that uh luke was not the main character so yeah and so therefore if, he was hard to handle in a scene by scene basis because he not necessarily that's not, that's not what i'm trying that, to that wasn't your point no no my, my my point is if you are um developing if since luke is not the main character we cannot have him solve all the problems we can't sure. have him yeah. be the protagonist because he is not the protagonist of course yeah. we all want to see him as a protagonist and i still hold out hope that we get a show that's like luke in his prime my, my dream show is like is actually it, you may not like the first part but <laughs> is is ray starting a new jedi order oh i love that I would she love has that, yeah. she has the old text and she reads something that luke handscribed in there and then we flash back and it's luke in his prime traveling to some force sensitive place yeah. and meeting with new people and having this crazy adventure that forced him to write this and then her mm -hmm. taking those lessons and moving forward so it could be like a prime luke anthology yeah um i would love to see that so much i think we yeah, like, like a, it, something like, like a, that um, yeah. oh, what's that story not land before time um where the the father is telling the princess bride Yes. Oh yeah. That'd yeah. Yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, exactly. Yeah. That's that's what I would love. But no, I'm I'm saying is that if you in that film we had character arcs for Ray, for Ben, uh, for Finn, even though Finn's was shorter, for Poe, and I thought Finn was the coolest character, man. Really, yeah. like I, I feel like he he had so much uh, depth that could have been evolved in that whole. Thing, but it, I was it like, didn't. Black Cow Katarn, Black Cow Katarn, yeah, let's go. Sure, yeah, let's go. Sure. Been sick, it been sick, like, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, and, and and I and I feel for John for what he said. How they used him mm -hmm. as like a token character, and what they did to him in the in the 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 Chinese poster for on in China. Like, I, dude, after hearing all that stuff, and then and then Daisy saying that, I'm like, okay. I'm done. Yeah, man. I just, I guess I like, I, I, you know, and I'm glad that you came on Chaco, but I, I don't, I just feel like there's like a root of a problem here that like maybe we're not getting to or whatever, because like, it seems like you, you really love star Wars. You really love these characters. You really love getting into all this stuff and that's dope, man. But mm -hmm. like, we just, I don't know if we see things the same way. And I just don't know, like, like, are you like, do you feel like we're screwing things up by not speaking 
to people like you more in, in a sense, like our, or, or your feelings or opinions, like maybe you weren't beefing with him as hard as I thought, but like, I, is that where some of that's coming from? It, it's, it's not, it's not beef at all. Basically what it boils down to is I feel like there is more, I, it's not your responsibility to, you know, what your fans, what your followers say, what they do and all that stuff. It's not your responsibility. It's not. Thank you. Um, there are times where I had someone um, on, on TikTok who uh, screen recorded me, insulted me a bunch and all this stuff. And so I, I stitched the video and uh, that person let me know that some of my fans were making fun of them and making fun of how they speak. And that person has a speech impediment and all this stuff. And that kind of hurt me because I don't, I don't want them to do that on my behalf. That's not me. I don't condone that at all. Yeah. I didn't ask them to do it. Right. Um, so I, I did make a, I mean, especially speech. And I, I grew up with every speech impediment known to me. I spent years in speech therapy. So, um, well, so you I, speak I made, very well. I would, yeah. You no. sound great. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So I, I made a video asking people, don't, don't do that. You know, I, I took down my previous video so people wouldn't keep going to him. And whenever something like that happens, I try to be hyper aware of what is the fallout? What am I enabling, you know, my fans to do? Sure. Uh, it's, it's not my, I'm not responsible if they hear what I say and they go out and they fight someone on, on my behalf. But there are things I can do. There are things I can consider. Um, there are bad things that happen that I could speak out against. You know, yeah. I have quite a few, you know, women in, in one of my servers, and I get hit with just the nastiest and ugliest stuff every single day. Every single day. Um, and so I, even though I would rather just make videos on the Star Wars content that I like, I will make ones that call out the toxicity in the community. I will say, Hey, this isn't okay. You know? And I, and also I try to provide clarification because there are certain things on both sides. You know, I know that there's a bunch of people that if you don't like Ray, all of a sudden you're a misogynist. Well, that's not true. Right. That's not true at all. I don't believe that. That's what I can hit with. But yeah, I will say, I know a lot of women who get a lot of misogynists in their comment sections. So I try to let people know, Hey, if you are saying the same things and sound exactly like these misogynists, people might believe that that's what you are. Yeah. So just, just be cognizant of what you're saying, what you're putting out there. That's, those are the messages that I'm trying to say, I'm not right. calling anyone this or that I, I'm trying to bridge that. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. like it's great How to is that hear relevant you some of that to stuff, me though. as a creator. Cause I feel like there's a message I'm missing. <laughs> so the message is, while you're not responsible for anything that your fans do or say, uh, I, I believe that there is a lot of, um, I believe that because, you know, your numbers show you that more people dislike the sequels than like it, that puts you in the majority and then gives free reign to kind of dig on the minority. Uh, it I don't think gives it gives free reign to, to dig on anybody. I think it just shows that people disliked something more than they liked it. As you as you know, going back to what you said, uh, what people say if they're sub to you isn't a representation of things that you condone. Yeah, correct. So I don't think it. It. I'm uh, validating anyone digging anything. I would say I'm just merely putting up a democratic poll for people to vote uh they could just as easily vote yes in favor they could just as easily vote no not in favor and that's up to the people that has nothing to do with me so for things that would you say it's toxic with... for me to even put up that poll no is that not what you're all. saying okay not at all. okay please elaborate what i'm saying is that uh you can like let's say you start promoting release the george lucas cut or whatever right yeah Right. Yeah. 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 Well, right after the Snyder cut, right after the, the Snyder cut came out, uh, there's people that wanted to review bomb, um, uh, Kong, you know, uh, and they, they, there are people that want to boycott the Batman mm -hmm. in order to like strong arm the company yeah. into putting things back into that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I, so, so, sorry, like for to, instance, to I see that to not release the Snyder is that to not release more Snyder stuff. Is no, to not release the other like the Hamada stuff to prove to Warner Brothers that they should just do Snyder stuff. That's what he's that's what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and so the the parallel is is that's bringing in that same divisiveness. In, yeah. into the but I would say right that now. divisiveness is out there, brother. Like that divisiveness exists. I, I mean, you, and we I don't, don't have to contribute. I want to. I, 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 I don't know I wanna, if that's true. Add, just wanna, to be honest. So, so by me wanting as a fan, wanting the sequel trilogy that George Lucas had written, uh, and he wrote several. There were a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. One was all about midichlorians and the wills. Yeah, the and James Cameron the interview. One, yeah, and then the next one is about you know Darth Talon that he was gonna bring in there. Uh, which was the latest interview from a few years ago with Paul Duncan. Mm -hmm. So by me wanting that and by me expressing that, you're saying because I have a following, then that's toxic and I shouldn't propagate such a thing. Or I'm inciting violence or I'm inciting... I think he's that, saying like is just sort of using your... like he, I think, and I could be wrong here, so just feel free to correct me, but I think that kind of what you're saying, Chaco, is like basically theory is doing some things that because of sort of the size of his channel or the amount of influence that he has he can act he can affect things and for you you're sitting back and you're like oh man even if this guy doesn't necessarily do this because it's toxic if he does this all the toxic people will be able to sort of follow behind him or leverage him or sort of use his influence to then further their means is that kind of what you're saying basically yes I mean, I think even saying it out loud, you can probably understand why it's a little ridiculous, right? I mean, I get the feelings you have. I understand what you're saying. But, I mean, this guy's that's, – that's not that guy. That, that's not who he is. You know what I mean? And, like, maybe we just need to have more conversation. Well, I feel like it's to a point where I don't think it's I'm, intentional. Yeah. I, right. I feel you because I don't think this you do it, think it's right. intentional. I, yeah, I want to so. understand what you're trying to say because I'm still not understanding. <laughs> Uh, so you can say something that is neutral that people can take and run in a hugely negative direction. Yeah. And, and I feel like you could say the same exact message, but in a different way or more positive or something like that, that that'll prevent that from happening. Or yeah. when this tide does um, flow this direction can, can clarify or say something um, about that to help you know the talk the the community that is drowning underneath this this wave of negativity. Hmm. So yeah. would you say I'm a trendsetter for the wave of negativity, or I could basically be a shining light and drown out the wave of negativity? Is it like I don't believe I have that power. I believe you have more power than 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 you believe. I think I would call you fulcrum. You know, you're like a uh -huh. like Ahsoka. Yeah, um, but so well, that's very humbling for you, yeah. you know, so you just say that and for me to hear that. But um, me putting out that tweet, that was something that Mark and I were talking during the, the live stream a couple weeks ago. And we're like, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Just, just put it out because that's something I want to see because he did have a cut for it. Or he had an idea. He had several ideas. Mm -hmm. So by me putting that out, what would you, let's say you were me, how would you have worded that? Or would you just not have put that out? So then when when does it get to the point where I, I have to censor things I want to say? And then I'm not me anymore. I'm now trying to adhere to a neutrality and play Switzerland, which I don't want to do that. I just want to be me. And and you don't have to. You're not, you know you're not responsible. But, I mean, you also have to... Um, I believe that this was prompted because there actually there have been more people saying that you've become more negative lately. Mm. Right? Okay. Is How? that what prompted I would this? argue how how have i become more negative i i'm not saying you are i'm saying that this this is what people have been saying that prompted you to have this discussion is that correct or or yeah, what prompted sure. It? sure i mean from my there, perspective well, i've I mean, always wanted to have people on i mean okay. people have always thought i was this or that uh, it's nothing new really i mean but i but this I is think great it, yeah, because sure. what this does is Helps us see, I mean, like like you said, that was just a throwaway tweet. You guys were talking, should I send this? Should I not send this? Not everyone has that context. So I you love having this, this, yeah. And I like having this conversation because then we get to see, you know, the, the man behind the chair and, and understand like, no, there's, there's nothing 
malicious going on here or anything like that. You know, and I, yeah. I think that these conversations are greatly helpful for that. But um, yeah, you know. I yeah. think I think with me, um, if you know me and you follow my channel, then you know I have no malicious intent, and you, you know my heart, and you've been with me through this journey of building this channel uh, um, for a long time. Um, then everything I say, you won't see it as a sort of malicious way. But I feel like the people who already don't like me or have a narrative about me or, or, or think a certain way about me um, or, you know, who don't know me very well, they see a tweet like that and they're going to be like, they've already put me in this box of toxicity or, or negativity or whatever. So they're going to think that regardless of what I say. It's tough, dude. I could even you know. say, hey, have a nice day. They could be like, oh, he's just being toxic towards sequel lovers. He doesn't He doesn't want them to have a nice day. It's, it can, you know. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. And, so, and that's where we get into major gray areas. And I, so I'm, I'm not saying that you have to hide yourself or censor yourself. Mm -hmm. I, censor I, I believe myself. that all all opinions are are valid, uh, considering if they're based off of good information. But um, yeah. but uh, overall, we are operating in a, in a gray area, and this is a continuum. Only you can decide where which place to be on it. But if you align more on one side and yeah, you're absolutely allowed to be yourself, but you can't be surprised if more of this creeps in or it creeps up more people who are trying to say that, that you've, you've changed. Well, I would argue, how have I changed? I, and I'm, I'm not, <laughs> again, I'm not accusing you of changing. I, I already mentioned, you know, there is, there's a point where I was, you know, I thought the information provided didn't match up, and that bothered me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What I'm doing is I'm I'm talking about how I I have seen that narrative lately, and I believe that's what what prompted. But uh, as far as someone that says that you've changed, I I wouldn't be the guy to have that exact conversation with. Okay. I, I can I can just tell you you know how much I love Star Wars. I, again, huge fans legends i've read every canon book as well um i i love all of it yeah man. and and i love that um and i love that we're getting more of it we have so much awesome stuff coming down the pipeline i'm super stoked for bad batch if you can't tell yeah man uh but you know i i i, I hope that i've been able to kind of create like a small community that's really positive that you know you don't have to worry about hate if you say ray skywalker you don't have to worry about getting flooded. Yeah. Um, I, I think if anyone could create that type of environment on a macro scale, it'd be you. But it's not your responsibility. I would argue that be. he's done. I mean, and I said this to him earlier. We had a conversation off off air, and I was like, "Look, man, like before we even knew each other, I would look at Theory's content and just straight up thought there was more care." <laughs> There was more like effort to be peaceful. Like I looked at, you know, no offense to Star Wars explained, but I feel like Alex and Molly picked their side. You know what I mean? I feel like they picked the sequel defenders. I feel like in some ways they picked the political leaning left and they picked their side. I feel like people like Jeremy picked their side. I feel like theory picked Star Wars. You know what I mean? And I feel like the fans can't sort their feelings out about it. So like, I, again, like, I don't think you're a bad dude, Chaco. I'm glad you came on, man. You said some cool stuff. Guy, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't know if I agree with you about what to do with a platform, what one's responsibility is to oneself and when, one's platform, you know? Look, let, let me just say it like this. Do you have people in your personal life that, you know, throughout your entire life, school, whatever, uh, that have ever disagreed with you? Absolutely. That have ever thought things of you that aren't true yes okay you're one guy now take that and expand it to three million how many more of those voices are you going to hear yeah that's got to be tough a lot it's tough dude i don't even get a modicum of what this guy gets and i'm like calling him you know what i mean yeah, yeah, and I, I have. Uh... And, and once your once your channel it continues to grow and you you start hitting those big numbers, you start bringing in millions of different minded people. You don't know who you're bringing in. You just know that they all love Star Wars, but they each have their own agendas. Some of them might be cool, neutral. Some of them might be crazy, alt right. Some of them might be alt left. Some of them might be whatever. I don't know. 
mentally imbalanced. Who knows? Some of them may hate you. Some of them may love you. You have no idea who these people are. But you yeah, just know that there are so many more people and they each have their own little minds and their own perception of you. And they are then in turn going off and telling other people about their perception of who they think you are. So what what's going to happen out of that? So which one is the real you? What all of these people are saying or is it is it what you're saying? And that's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, and that's I mean it's it's character versus reputation, right? Yeah, characters mm -hmm. who you are, reputation is what they say you are. Um, but I mean I can I can look at you right now, look look at you in the eyes digitally as it is. <laughs> digitally, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And tell how how close to the vest you carry all this stuff. So that I mean, which mm -hmm. which obviously we've I've seen in, in other videos and things before, but um, to see you reacting to like my words right now is is pretty powerful. Yeah, and I appreciate your words. And you know, you you opened up my eyes to stuff with the Last Jedi that, uh, while I still hold my same sentiment towards it, I'm able to see now what people who love the Last Jedi see and how they correlate that to you know the Empire Strikes Back and the yeah. the originals and stuff like that. And that's cool. You know, I didn't really see that all that much before because I was just so off put. Yeah, and it's so I appreciate that. I appreciate you. you Apologize, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's it's been a great, a great conversation. And I mean, if if either you two would ever want to come on Diet in the Force with uh, Element Seven and I, <laughs> yeah, send hit up, hit me up on Discord, man. You know for sure. Yeah, all right, for for sure, we'll we'll do. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. I feel like I've we've hit a great good. point though. <laughs> Great conversation, man. I yeah, man. really like talking to you. I mean, yeah. Uh, I think you got something to say, man, for sure. I think you got something to yeah. say. I don't I don't know if I fully agree with it, but I would love to you hear You don't it. have to. That's the that's the beautiful part is that you can that's see his point of view with everything, and he can see my point of view, everything. He doesn't have to agree with me, he doesn't have to agree with you, but we can both understand and respect each other as human beings and as Star Wars fans and be like, Look, dude, this is where I'm coming from. Okay, cool. This is where I'm coming from. Cool, man. And that I love that. And in twenty twenty two, me, you, Santa Claus, uh what well, well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. celebration. I hope everybody's there at celebration. I'd love to see you for we'll real. Have, we'll I live, have, I live we'll in have, San Diego, yeah. so it's it's not too far of a drive. Um I'm that's always at bad. Comic Con as well. So that's great. So then we'll all meet. Yeah, we'll man, all hug. That's great. Cool. Absolutely. If we're I'm all down. we're all not sick, yeah, we'll all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thanks for all being right, here, man. Cool. I guess. Have All a right, good one. I'll right, pop out. Later. Take care. That's sweet. That was good. That was good. That was good. You know, yeah, I, I, I think, I think they're, yeah, I think they're having fun. Yeah, I, th I think they're having fun. No, it's okay. good to hear from other people in different perspectives. There were a couple of things that he said that I thought were, that were pretty interesting. You know what I mean? And I, and I get, I mean, you could just tell he really loves the characters. You know what I mean? And yeah, like, man. He's, and, he's, and like. Who the hell am I to tell him that his opinion is invalid? You know, for sure, for sure. I, I have a high sub count. Woo. I mean, and the thing there. is, you know, you know what I keep seeing, dude, that really made me smile was like all the people that came in here tonight and said, you know, it's wrong to to say if someone doesn't like Ray that they're sexist. That doesn't get said enough. It's not said enough on Twitter. It's not retweeted enough. The mainstream media doesn't say it enough. But we yeah. had a lot of left leaning people come in, and maybe not even left leaning. That doesn't even matter. But they're sequel supporters. And they, they came are. in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But they came in here and they said that is not right. And it's true because it's not right. And it was really just it was great because I think that needs to be said more by those kind of people. You and I can say it. It's it's not going to hold as much weight. When Santa said it, I felt like it hit different. When Chaco said it, I felt like it hit different. You know what I mean? So I, I just want to say thank you to both of those men. Yeah, that was a really great discussion. Um once again, you've proved, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> we got, uh, yeah, someone else wants to come in. I sent her the link. Uh, we'll see if she's around. She still, she sent me a request a while ago. So cool. And I know there's a lot of you guys on Twitter still. And then we'll probably just do this as the last guest. Sounds good to if me, they brother. Want. If they yeah. don't, we'll just do someone random here. I'm looking through Twitter. Man, so good for the soul. Nerd Theory Monday night. Let's go. Yeah, what do you guys think about this? Yeah, Chat. I'd love some feedback. I mean, I'm having a blast. I want man. feedback, man. Let me know what's going on here. I felt like it was really good stuff. 
Here we go. Hello. Yo. Fine. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Wait, doing? am I is am I good? You're good. Yeah. What's up? What's going on? I'm like. Can you hear us? Can you can you hear us? Can you hear us? Uh oh, she can you hear uh, us? I okay. Don't think the system works. Can you hear can you hear, can you hear us, us at all? I can hear you, but I also have Okay. I had to get rid of the mm -hmm. YouTube because I could hear that pull my voice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um Confusing. uh yeah, no, hi. Um I hi. that was so great to have you guys talk to Chaco because um, like he and I are really good friends and it was really nice to hear you guys like have he was a really nice guy I yeah. could tell that he's he, really genuine he and... is the most genuine human being I know like I yeah. that man does not have a bad bone in his body no. um yeah. and, and you know he's not like he's big on TikTok the stuff that people send him and the, his responses I just I just love that guy he's so nice but um but yeah, no, that was an awesome. I'm gonna follow him on TikTok right now. Yeah, me too. I want to make a TikTok Chaco. just to follow Chaco. So. Just I the way I, I can't say enough nice things about him. Like he's just a wonderful human being. He and Element Seven both, but um they are he, they both do such incredible work on TikTok, just trying to get more people to like Star Wars. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, I don't um, know anything about follow, TikTok. I'm a, him back. I'm a boomer when it comes to uh TikTok, so it's an interesting platform. I mean, it's not. I myself, I, I, I'm 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 TikTok creator. Theory and I've talked about this before, but um. You want to shout out your TikTok for people? Sure, I'm Sawyerism on TikTok. That's um S A W Y E U R I S M. I do a lot of Legends content. Um, I'm a lore master, um, particularly the Old Republic. Uh, but something that I feel like. I should say while I have this like opportunity is like I, what a lot of people don't realize about my content is that I was a sequel lover before I even touched the old Republic, mm. which I feel like that gives me a weird perspective because I, that's not to say, I mean, I grew up with star Wars. I, uh, you know, star Wars from the day I could talk, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I loved the sequels and then I started getting into the old Republic and then I was like, Oh, what's this? Mm -hmm. um, which is so, it, it, I mean, it's very interesting to me because now my content is all Old Republic. That's yeah. all I want to talk about to anyone. Um, Who's every, your favorite? Like, what's your favorite part of the Old Republic? Oh my gosh. I don't even know where to start. Sith Are you Lord. a Raylo? Are you a Raylo? <sighs> so Revan and Bastila? Yes, that... Revan and Bastila. Yes, okay. Revan and Bastila. That was mm -hmm. like the first the first video I made lore-wise was comparing Raylo to Bastila and Revan. And the funny thing is, like, as a like long-term Raylo stan, I can sit here confidently and tell you that Raylo is like ordering Bastila and Revan on Wish. <laughs> I, agree. I agree, and I've been saying um, it for a while, but yeah. And I can't watch anymore. <laughs> Thanks. I've been trying to talk about Raylo on this podcast for um, weeks. Oh my I god, I got, got you. you. Um, I, Josh when, is your boy. <laughs> when I played KOTOR for the first time, I was in it for the... I actually read Revan first before I played KOTOR, um, nice. which I honestly don't even think it was a mistake because I was really sad and then I got to go back and like be happy again with it. Um, but that was my primary goal. I wanted to get through the full Revan and Bastila arc, and I did not realize that there is a glitch where if you talk to Bastila after you kiss her, the whole romance quest goes away. I did not realize that. I got all the way uh, to Verkata and the romance text options weren't there after I defeated her and I was like, what? Did you, save? Did you have a save point that you could go back to? No, I played the whole game over again. Oh, geez. I started over that night and I went all the way to, I think, Kashyyyk in that same night because I was like livid. Wow. Um, but yeah, if Revan and Basil are probably, thank you for pointing that out. Um, but yeah, no, I think it, it's been a really interesting kind of journey for me, I think, because I, first of all, I can't make sequels content anymore. Like, I just can't. If I say anything positive about those movies, you know, I've lost hundreds of followers from one video before. Really? Because, yeah, because I have a lot of, you know, a, a large people. majority of my fans are 
Old Republic stands, and I've made content before that's, you know, okay, I'm just taking a break from Old Republic for a little bit, I'll make a sequel video, and I lose hundreds of followers, and I'm just like, mm. why? Like, it's not for everybody, but I think that this unique perspective of me starting with the sequels, or starting with liking the sequels and then going into the Old Republic, I get it. I know why people are upset with the sequels. And I can like sit here and have a conversation with anyone who does not like the sequels and fully understand because something the Old Republic did that even the old the original movies can't do is it built this crazy it, it took the galaxy to a next level situation. Yeah, you know, like it really shows us how big this galaxy really is. And so I get it. It makes sense. There, you know, the, some of the old republic books. I like better than some like some of the films like legitimately yeah. oh 100 percent, um, yeah and i think so that's been kind of a really interesting thing for me in terms of how my platform has grown because i i don't blame anyone for saying they don't like the see i mean i don't blame anyone before but like it's it's just a unique thing because people love to tell me that i don't know what i'm talking about when i right. say like the sequels and i'm like <laughs> oh well i mean and then there's the other thing about like being a woman i'm not i do not this is not me saying that i wanted to turn this into like an identity politics discussion but you'd be surprised how many times i get a conversation that's like well you don't know what you're talking about you've never read that book you never played the game uh and then someone will tag chaco i get a lot of comments tagging chaco being like does she know what she's talking about hmm. like on tiktok yeah, all the time. All the time. And not just Chaco, like any, I think I can count on both hands. No, I I could probably name like 11 or 13 male lore masters on TikTok, and I can name three women. And that's fine. It's just, you know, Star Wars is a male-dominated fandom, but... Um, not I, anymore. <laughs> not anymore. That's true. Okay, that, that, that's fair. Um, but it is... I don't know. But... Um, yeah, but it's, it was for like forty years or so, and 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 now it's you know with, I feel like, I feel like once Ahsoka was brought in, there were more and more females that were. I feel like the guys sure. liked Ahsoka more. Um, than and I, I think it, TikTok um, is such a unique platform in that. Um, I know you said said you're not familiar with it, yeah. but um, no, I make a couple. Of things. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing on there. And and did you I, figure I, I out the creator I, fund? I'm, no, I, I'm still not monetized. <laughs> I didn't even know you could make money on it. It's okay. That's we'll cool. get you there. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah, but, I'm trying to be a TikTok star. Let's um, go. But yeah, let's get Josh about, on there. The thing about TikTok is you have 60 seconds. So hmm. a lot of people do, um, you know, just like meme stuff, which is equally as valid. But, you know, there aren't a lot of lore hmm. creators. And it's just... It is frustrating. It, can, I it ask is... You, can I ask you a couple questions? I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm just super curious. Okay, so here's the thing. So you are a sequel fan. Yes. I'm thinking you probably lean left a little, yeah? Mm -hmm. in, your, in your politics. But I don't, I don't, I try not to bring that into my fandom. <laughs> sure. I guess my question is like when you were really just in the sequels before you went into the Old Republic, did you view the criticism of the sequels differently then that you do now and like i guess what if you know because your thesis is really interesting what lesson like have you tried to bring any knowledge back to the village like what have you said now coming back to your your pure sequel fans like i guess are you a little more empathetic you, you've sort of said this before but i guess i'm really just trying to pull it out of you like what is the lesson there i think i think the lesson goes both ways that's a really good question but i think for the sequel fans, I think there is a window of opportunity to be like, hey, you guys really like Raylo. Check out this other thing that's really cool and is kind of the inspiration for Raylo. Um, but, and, and the equal part of that is I can also go to them and be like, hey, I know you guys are really upset with people who don't like the sequels, but maybe this is why. Mm. On the other side of it, um, I, I, I think, I, I wouldn't say that the Old Republic necessarily is what caused me to understand the criticisms of the sequels, like, 
specifically. I think mm. just be becoming a Star Wars creator was, you know, the Shit, gateway to that. A, yeah, that's a great um, point. Yeah. Because you don't, you know, before I was just existing in this bubble as a fan being like, I love this. Now I'm a creator and it's my job to figure out what other people like. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that and with making connections with other creators, that has shown me, okay, like, I, here's all these different sides of what's going on. And it's our job to think critically about this stuff. So I think that has been like the main influence for me understanding the criticism of this uh, sequels. But I think what the older public did like definitively was that those were the first books that I read and reading those books and realizing that this universe could be so much bigger than it already was through just yeah. those films. I think that was a huge push for me to be like, okay, now I get it. That's um, awesome. So I, I don't think it was that I didn't, you know, <laughs> We could go on and on and on about continuity issues in the sequels. Um, and I can I will not sit here and tell you that I think they're perfect films um, by far. I think they're fun to watch. And I think that sometimes we get, you know, us passionate fans, we get so passionate about a lot of things and we love to hate. Um, and I think at that point, we kind of forget to enjoy things at face value. Um, I think there's a lot about the sequels that are just kind of fun and yeah. I'm not, you know, I don't, that's kind of how I try to present my opinions. Like, that's why I don't answer that question of like, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Like that mm. is one question I will not answer anymore because so it's too like gatekeepy and it doesn't matter what I say, somebody's yeah. going to be mad about it. Or like Revenge of the Sith is actually on the lower half of my list, uh, which is, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's treason, then. I know! What? <laughs> and you're sounding like a separatist. <laughs> <laughs> it's treason, then. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Why? Why don't you like Revenge of the Sith? I, Why is it at the, 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 the bottom? So. Yeah, get ready for all that stuff you were worried about. Here it comes. <laughs> so, I mean... I should preface this by, I'll finish my earlier thought. The reason I don't tell people, especially on live streams, what my favorite film is, is because, again, it's kind of my job to, like, think critically about this stuff. So that answer, I feel like, is going to change a lot. So, sure. you know, I have it, made yeah. lists before, but the more fans I know and the more conversations I have, the more podcasts that I'm on to talk about these films, my list is going to change. So I don't, I don't have a definitive answer. I also fully intend, haven't gotten around to it yet, but I fully intend to watch the four hour cut that has the Clone Wars scenes mixed into it with Revenge I've of the Sith. I've never even heard of that. That sounds um, dope. If you add me on Discord, I'll send you the link. Cool. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, someone put pieced together like s clips from season seven at, into where they fall in the timeline of Revenge of the Sith. Um, cool. And I do kind of think that watching that will make me like it more. Um, but I just, I don't know. The last time I watched Revenge of the Sith was a year ago now. And I watched it, I was on a flight to Australia, which is a long flight. Um, and they had all of the movies. So I watched like four of them in a row. Dude, one, two, three, that would have been a sick flight. <laughs> yeah, flight it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool. Jesus. Um, and it was right like, after The Rise of Skywalker came out. So they gave us like these like special pouches oh, wow. for like so our, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, but that, that's why all the movies were available. And that's the last time I watched Revenge of the Sith. And I just remember going like, I felt like the first half was kind of slow. And then this, I I really, I got issues with what they did to Padme. I really yeah, do have that's issues totally with what fair. they did to Padme. Yo, we should do a whole um, podcast on that because a lot of people true. feel similarly. Yeah. But and I you mean, know, she kind of made that bet herself though. Natalie did. How? Yeah. She was beefing with George. Was she? Dude, yeah. It's I'll we can talk about it later. Oh yeah. We'll talk about it later. Interesting. Okay. Um, but but in the Revenge of the Sith novel, we find out that she's getting involved with the creation of the rebellion. I would have loved to see that. Or I would have loved to see her bring a knife and come out. Exactly. In the storyboards. Like that, those little things I think for me would have made it that much better. Um, but bring it up for people who haven't seen it. The other what? Oh, he's bringing up the yeah, yeah. He's just bringing up something for them to see. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, but the other part of it is that Anakin is one of my least favorite characters. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's gonna make Don't it tough. Don't make me kill you. <laughs> See, that's ex I knew he was gonna do something like that. I knew he was gonna do. Something. I'm never talking to her ever again. <laughs> You're under arrest, Gambler. The Senate will decide your fate. Dang, <laughs> okay, but hold on. First, before we go down that road, Darth Nihilus is my least favorite character. Why is that? Hmm. Just because you don't like Galactus? He is not Galactus. Okay, Galactus. I get real hated about Darth Nihilus. I mean, he's kind of like Galactus. He's cool, but he's a little Galactus. -y. I Galactus -y. just, you know, that's a whole different topic. But we spend an entire game talking about him, and he's this, he's cool, and he eats planets, and blah blah blah. And then he's like the easiest fight in the game. Yeah, it is a little weak how they treat him in the game. And then we have Scion, who has so much screen time and is really interesting, and mm -hmm. nobody talks about him. And then, True. of course, we have Kreia, who is oh, Kreia's the Kreia's badass, Bay, the yeah. coolest. Like, so Kreia that's is Bay, yeah, like for sure. <laughs> she, that's, so that's can that's I ask you? I a, can I ask you another question? Just because I want to, I want to kind of put like a button on this whole thing because we've been talking to people about, like, I guess criticisms and just their thoughts on maybe how we could do better mm -hmm. at trying to. Because look, this community is awesome, but it's painful to be in this community sometimes. I know it's <laughs> painful for you. It's painful for us. I mean, what's your perspective on that? What do you, what do you think that uh, theory and myself could do a little bit better, maybe? Oh, that is that's tough. Um, I think I think Chaco probably touched on some of this a lot, um, but I also you know I've had conversations with theory and like you know other people in the industry about this, and I think it's I I guess for me. Like, I, I was actually talking about this with um, some of the people in Theory's Discord server right before uh, you invited me on. But the way that I look at it is I have, right now, 23,000 followers. That's not a lot compared to you guys, but, yeah, that's it's doing lot. okay for it's myself. It's a lot. Yeah, that's um, great. I, um, and, you know, of those 23,000 people, once, twice, three times a week, I'll get someone who said, hey, I bought this book because you said it was really good and it's really good. And I'm so glad I bought this book. Yeah. So I guess for me, if I can do that with only a few followers, I feel like you guys can absolutely sway things a little bit. I don't think that we can sit here and be like, we are eradicating all toxic people. Like mm. it doesn't work like that. But I think that at bare minimum, I think, I guess in my mind, influencers have, a moral responsibility to at the very least call stuff out if we see it. Sure. Um, but I don't think, you know, I, I think the bigger my page gets, the more I start to understand that I'm not going to be able to respond to every hate comment and, you know, make a difference to everybody. And there are a lot of people who just will not change their mind no matter what you tell them. Um, but yeah, no, I think there is some degree of moral responsibility for us to, you know, if I see a mass amount of people hating on one particular creator and I know I have a bigger platform, I'm going to jump on that immediately and be like, no, you can't. This is not okay. This is not who we are. Um, that, that's why I have my platform. You know, I made a video in May of last year that people didn't like. And my platform was built off of big creators coming in and going, stop. This person loves Star Wars just like you do. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I where, think do you, where do you draw the line with that, though? Like, because there are so many people that need um, you to come to their aid then your channel would basically just be you being like a policeman kind of thing. It's, <laughs> That's, and and I, don't, I don't mean to be insensitive about it, I, but because I, I understand. I would, you know, in, in the beginning, I would love to, um, when there's only a few people who maybe stand out from the crowd uh, versus now where it's, it's almost, it's white noise. Yeah. Um, because if you don't treat it as white noise, you'll go insane and you won't be able to cover content ever. Yeah, I mean, that's you'll always why be focused really, on drama. You'll always be focused on things that have nothing to do with Star Wars. And um, that's kind of where I'm at with it, too, is like, I think the thing is, man, like I get hit up all the time for like, 
GoFundMes or, oh, yeah. you know, like oh, help me out with this. And it's like, look, the thing is, like, I totally understand it. You know what I mean? Like, I totally do. But legitimately, you have to put a filter on and you'll learn this as you get bigger and bigger. Like, you simply can't be all things to all people. You can't. Yeah, of course. You know, so um, the more you try, the more you're going to cause yourself to go crazy and you're going to lead fans actually down a bad path. Because if you're faking it, if you're fronting, if you're doing what's not real, it's only a matter of time before it comes through the cracks. You know what I mean? We're all afraid of cancel. <laughs> um, yes. Um, no, I, I completely understand. And I think you're right. The bigger I grow, I think the more I'll understand that. Um, You'll see. Yeah. It, it's, um, and you're probably already seeing it now. Cause I mean, 23,000 is nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot. Yeah, it's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, I guess to some extent there is, a level of bias that you take with your, you know, moral responsibility. So things that you particularly feel passionate about are probably going to be what you lean towards defending. But is that even um, right? <laughs> that That's is the, the thing. question. It's actually it? not. It's um, I can no. It's I can tell you legitimately, it's not. But I guess I don't. I guess for me, I think that there is a difference between being critical and being mean. Absolutely. And if I find myself in a position where I have the means to say something, I will. Um, yeah. And I think, I think you're right. I think trying to police things like that is impossible because yeah, theory is right. You're never going to be able to make your own content. And that's yeah. not what I want. And I don't think that's what, that's definitely not, not what you guys want. Um, but you know, if I am in a community that I feel like, you know, like even just like a discord community where yeah. I have, you know, I have like a hundred people in my discord server, you know, I admin one that has like 400 people in it. If I can, if, yeah. if those people, if I'm making positive relationships with those people and I can be like, Hey, I noticed that this really hateful thing about Kathleen Kennedy was being spread. Can we maybe try not to do that? Then the hope is that people will take that and go, okay, this is a person I look up to. I trust her and take that elsewhere. Um, so if I can do that just a little bit, yeah, I feel like that's all that really matters. Um, for sure. And I, th I totally agree with you. And I think for me personally, it's something that I do try to do and I, I do take it seriously, but I just think probably differently about it than you do. Honestly, is all that it is. It's, it's not a, a difference of ideals. I think in an ideal world, I think you and I would align very closely. We want, we want Star Wars to be positive. We want people to enjoy it and have fun and not feel belittled for the differences of opinion they have with others. But the reality is, I don't know if we can get to that ideal world. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we can't I, get to an ideal world at all, can we? Never. No one's ever going to be completely satisfied. That's the whole thing. So yeah. what then becomes the goal? Because if the goal is not utopia, then maybe the goal is just a, a fandom that's a little less shitty. <laughs> I completely agree. Um, and I think, um, like Taka mentioned, we just watched The People versus George Lucas. And just listening to some of those fans. George so Lucas raped my childhood. I mean... What do you want? <laughs> I mean, that's what it, that's the opening song of the film. You know I would have sold mean? it too. Yeah. And I just, you know, yeah, exactly. It's just, it, it history repeats itself. And um, do I think with or without us, the sequels are going to kind of have a rebirth like the prequels did? Yeah. I mean, the prequels, look where we are now. It's a sin to say that Revenge of the Sith is not your favorite movie to some people. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I think, you know what? I disagree. I don't think it'll be looked at. I don't think it'll be changed. I think the consensus around the sequels will still be the same 20 years from now. I think it won't be as... People won't be as sensitive about it. Yeah. You know, like today, like, you know, if you, they'll be much more lenient. They'll be like, well, whatever. But I think the general view of it, I think, will be the same. It's possible that it changes, but it would require something like what the Clone Wars did for the prequels, but like times three or four. Not Maybe that's what Mando is doing. Like it would need to, because to me, I think what theory is speaking to is the fact that like the prequels are a great story wrapped in kind of wishy-washy mediocre filmmaking if you're just being like kind of fair about it. While the sequels are incredible filmmaking wrapped around kind of 
very lackluster story in in yeah. our in our opinions, right? So that Josh, the Josh, you know, he he kind of I like, like him Josh. way more than him. Yeah, he likes him way more than. I'm so. a, I'm a Raylo, so I I find that kind of stuff. Yes. Like, okay, we're friends now. Um, <laughs> not that that's a. Not you know, it's a prerequisite, but... just like liking um, Revenge of the Sith is for him, and it's mm -hmm. okay for you to be that way. By the way, um, it's please don't hate me. I, I I'll change my mind if it's the people. <laughs> I didn't know you were a Raylo, Josh. I've been just laying it on you slowly over time. I didn't know you were a Raylo. I know, man. <laughs> uh, Kill him. Kill him now. <laughs> More you know. Now I'm, Yo. where am. I lost my train of thought. Where is it? Oh, okay. Um, I think at the end of the day, the goal is just to get more people to like Star Wars and to, you know, foster the continuation of this fandom. And I think where I guess I'm looking at it with like the future of the sequels, I think that adults and especially people who entirely engulf themselves in Star Wars all the time, you know, yeah. tattoos, posters, content creation. We tend to forget that, yeah, the sequels have a lot of issues, but they still introduced an entirely new generation to Star Wars. Oh, man. Yeah. And so yeah. forever to those little boys who are running around in Kylo Ren costumes, they're always going to have an appreciation for the sequels. And they're going to grow up and they're going to show their children these movies and be like, this is what I grew up with. And I think that's, I guess, where I'm coming True. from when I say you that there is going to be a... a, a more positive interpretation of those movies. I, I we're still going to be around to critique them. Um, but yeah, I think you know, one time I was having a discussion with someone and they were like, well, those little kids, I've never seen a little kid with a Force Awakens like shirt. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. not true. But also, yeah. I, I, and I, that same person was like, they're not real fans. And I'm like, you're going to tell a little kid wearing a shirt from that movie that they're not like, I what? I would I would argue the the thing with that or my thoughts on that would be if they would see the sequels as you know the, the as three films you know cool but even within those three films they'd feel like mm, it's kind of all over the place but even if they don't they're like this is sweet they eat it up but if they see the first six then maybe they'd be able to draw a little bit more of a fragmented storyline that doesn't really maybe fit so well so maybe I could see them being like, oh, you know, let's say you, you who loves the sequels or somewhere, Josh who loves the sequels, you know, showing his kids. Uh, guys, we're going to sit down tonight and watch, you know, seven, eight, nine. And it's, it's, you know, Friday movie night. These are amazing. I love them. I grew up with them, blah, blah, blah. And the kids will love them. But then maybe those kids will grow up and then they'll have their own sort of consensus about them as well. Once they watch the rest of the films and then maybe their opinions will change in favor or not in favor and vice versa so no that's true but also I, by then we'll have something new for them to you know. yeah of course i mean true. disney wants um, to make money so true, we'll true. keep making stuff we got sure. a lot of stuff coming <laughs> we do i'm um, very excited about a lot of that but, um yeah, yeah no i mean i guess i just at the end of the day i try you know i, I recognize and I, I would say pretty confidently that I do not love the sequels as much as I used to because I, you know, you, you go into content creation, you kind of have no choice but to be confronted with facts. Um, yeah, there was a, the production of those three movies were, was really messy. And there's a lot to be said about that. But I try when I can, when I have the patience of the time, if I am met with someone who is just so vehemently against everything that Disney has done, I try to get them to name one thing from those movies. Just one. It could literally be Babu Frick. Babu Frick is tight. Did he make you smile? Yeah? Okay. There you go. That's it. You don't have to... You can go back to your hating, but I guarantee you that you didn't watch those movies and... There wasn't a single thing that made you go, okay, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I had that. No, I think in Babu in, is the best in, man. Yeah, Babu was was funny, but I don't look at Star Wars as like okay, like oh, did I you know like a regular sort of film? And I know this is from what you're perpetrating, but I'm saying I look at it as this is something that's like religion for me. So I if this is 
now just this fragmented story that doesn't really align with the first six, in my opinion. I know for many people it does, like Santa that was just here. Uh, then I'm going to have an issue with it. I don't care if you got Babu Frick or, you know, Porgs or, or whatever. Like it's for me, it's just works the opposite way. I'll see Babu Frick and I'll be like, this is even more like, what is this, this is a joke? And, and I'll just start to see things more negatively almost then. And I can try to like understand this in my own mind that I see it like, okay, not as like a, this is a continuation story. It almost takes me out, puts me into the fourth dimension. And I start thinking, what the hell were they thinking when they were writing this? And now I'm not in the story in, anymore. I'm not in the immersion. I'm now thinking of the whole writing process and then the people behind it who are writing. And that just sucks me out. I don't have that with the first six. That's 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 what pulls me out. And I think the most important mm -hmm. thing with the movie is to keep you sucked in there. And I'm glad that for many people it does that. Like for, for Darth Chaco that was just here. It failed to do that for me sadly yeah. yeah no and i think you're you're certainly not alone there is a lot of there's a lot of that um but i think the that i don't know i i guess we don't all have that ability to just sit down and watch a movie and have a beat you're right it's star wars is not the same as other movies you know it's I, I was going to say in a, a, a Marvel movie, but that's, you know, that's, uh, sorry, Josh. No, you're right. I, I, for tell, me, I actually tell for my me. Marvel fans that all the time, brother. Like, Star Wars slaps, it hits different. Like, it has a spiritual kind of thing, right? It, like, it, there's something about it. Like, I totally, the more I think about it, the years of, you're right. Like, we're all here talking about no, Star Wars. It's, like, it, yeah. even, even Marvel, like, even the Marvel fandom, it doesn't, that's like a cultural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Star Wars is a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah yeah and i kind of look at you know everything in terms of you've, have you seen monsters inc yeah where they take the the kids screams and then their laughter is like energy to power you know the mm -hmm. the land uh, all of this energy of, of hatred and this and that at the end of the day it's still energy and it's energy that's created from star from wars the, yeah that's true from the love and emotion and passion for star wars so at the mm -hmm. end of the day i mean this is a ton of energy that's being burned I just um, hopefully the, these sort of streams like this where we, we, we talk yeah. to people who have perhaps different opinions on, on stuff or even on me or on you, um, we can be kind of like a, I don't know, uh, be upheld to this sort of uh, image that you can disagree yeah, mm -hmm. and you can oh, still yeah. be respectful and you can still be friends about it. You can still be cool about it. You know, and you don't have to be like, oh, you're this and this. It's like, whatever, man. Yeah, cool. no, no, absolutely. I see your point of view. I respect it. And tonight, I was enlightened by many people who love the sequels. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I, I think it has to go both ways. I think that people, like like I said, I love, I still like the sequels. I always will because Good, a lot should. of, right, there, there are things from those films, Raylo in particular, that have helped me in ways that are very deeply personal to me. And I'm not going to let anybody take that away from me. No one can. Right. However, I don't think that we can grow as Star Wars fans. Like I'm talking like sequel supporters here. If you don't have friends who don't like them, because that's how, a great point. Yeah. yeah. Then it's an echo chamber. Right? You know, like I don't want, I have a podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have a podcast. Uh, it's called the Star Horse podcast. <laughs> and um, I would only be hurting myself and my platform if I exclusively had sequel lovers on my show. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, that's going to get boring after a while. And second of all, I think Star Wars podcasts are an amazing space for not only the people participating, but the viewers to completely change their perspective on what's going on. Um, it's a constant conversation. And I, you know, would be remiss to live a life without friends who don't like those films i think because, it's a great yeah it's a great point yeah yeah i just you know it's it's cool i am getting such a cooler perspective and look at uh at people that just see it a little bit differently than me i th i think it's it, one of the things that i think is so frustrating about this entire thing is that social media has made the ways by which we interact with most of these problems pretty inefficient 
at like being able to have a nuanced conversation, right? So like Twitter is super toxic. You only have so many letters. It, people dogpile. Yeah. It's it's really ridiculous, right? Uh, Discord servers tend to be some of the best, but again, you have trolls that come in and just try to destroy and 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 burn everything to the ground. Um, the comment section on YouTube is horrible. So it's like, what space did we actually have to engage with these ideas in a more nuanced, positive way? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if we did have a lot of those. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I will say, like, I, and I find this to be perhaps a reason for you, Josh, to give it a shot. Um, when I when I made that transition from fan to creator, um, it TikTok, TikTok's my platform. TikTok's mm. my platform. Uh, I had been a fan on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Tumblr. Um, and all I had seen was toxic everywhere. Everything yeah. is toxic. The TikTok community is so positive. So positive. What are we laughing at? Apparently, I'm the color of your hair. There's red lights in here, okay? And maybe stop I got a little tan, I can't okay? Stop laughing. Once I saw Jeez. it, I can stop laughing. I gotcha. Um, yeah, no, I, the, the, there is... Look, I, I don't think toxicity will ever end, just like no. I don't think bullying will ever end, but I think um, our ability to deal with it can be improved mm -hmm. as creators or as people in general. And I think in turn that will hopefully, I don't know about diminish toxicity, but it'll, you won't be as affected. Right. You know? um, but yeah, I mean... There are just I, I I only like stated that just because like that is a space where I've found pretty positive all things considered. Uh, oh no, I you're agree. Gray. You're not I haven't found anything gray. negative. I haven't. <laughs> found, yeah, 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 why are you gray now? I, I changed. Black and white. I, yeah, I changed it. I, yeah. <laughs> I do apologize. I didn't even realize. I wasn't sure if I was going to come on now. Now you just have my messy dorm room. Um, what are you studying? I'm a pre med student. Nice. Oh, cool. Right on. Pre med stuff, dude. Nice. It is. Uh, I don't know how I'm either studying chemistry or I'm studying the old republic. There's no in between. Oh, that's cool. We could open up a, a, a chemistry channel too. Oh my gosh, I don't think so. But I do do I, like when I'm not doing like specifically like legends. Well, specifically old republic content. I'll make. I'll do like deep dives on species, and I'll do like. I know way way too much about the hut species. It's like extremely disturbing what i, I think know. i ruined my camera <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to be cool and now oh, i no. ruined it gardula the hot is bay though oh my god um but yeah no like it, because i am a biologist by trade like that's i try to bring that into content sometimes and do some really find some really weird stuff out about uh that stuff i think my dream would to be to make like an insight like a full biological encyclopedia of every single species um that would take me you can years make a video about every single species it'd be cool would take me a long time but i mean i would love to go into youtube just because i feel like especially with old republic content getting into like the sith philosophies how am i supposed to fit that stuff in one minute um but um yeah, yeah. how does that work is it literally just hard capped at a minute or Yep. Well, okay. Apparently, there are some people who like have hacked the system and have posted five minute long videos before. Uh, I'm not intention. I don't do that. Um, but yeah, no, I have 60 seconds to tell you about whatever I want to talk about. The hardest ones are the philosophy stuff, like talking about trying to fit who Kreia is. Anyway. Yeah. Wait, what? I didn't. Yeah, you did, dude. You I didn't... was literally looking the other way. I didn't. You probably didn't mean to. Yeah, no, but no. Yeah, it's all. Good. There was some idiot who said Dave Filoni sucks. No, Ended up no. highlighting that one too, bro. I don't know which one's more offensive. Yeah. Anyway, um, I mean, just look. To... You like click one, and then I like go over here to click something, and then you like click this, and it's like get on TikTok. It's all um, good. My but yeah, no, will seriously, trying me. to put the story Jesus. of Kreia in one minute, like Jesus. 
someone, when I made that Korea video, I was really stoked about it because I really wanted to talk about her. And I used a picture of her with her three lightsabers, but I chose to omit that fact um, because I figured people would see the picture and be like, oh, she's got three purple lightsabers and they float. I got so many comments that were like, you didn't mention that she has three lightsabers that she floats with the fours. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> badass. Yeah, I, I was love that trying to bring this up until I inappropriately clicked something. It could have been anything else, and it happened <laughs> know, to land right? on that one. Great, that's awesome. Could have been. Yeah, wait till, wait till the videos tomorrow. Right. Jesus, yeah. great. Please use love. Just my luck. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, it, oh, happens. it happens to the best of us. Oh, well. That was legendary, says Kevin. That was horrible. I don't condone that at all. Yeah. But uh it looks like there's some people forgiving. Some people mm. being buttholes, but, you know, internet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kraya. Three Kraya. lightsabers. <laughs> Three lightsabers. Um, no, it's just the, the, the little details that, like, I feel it's – I got to figure out how to talk about this. You know, I got 60 seconds. I got a lot to say. What do I leave out? That's what I left out. Why did she mention that she didn't have three lightsabers? Why didn't she mention that she had three lightsabers? Why did she <sighs> – did you see the three lightsabers in the video? <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, it's not, it, it's, it has its own challenges. Um, but, um, oh, my favorite comment on that video was that I had mentioned that she was Revan's master and some, someone commented, she wasn't Revan's master. Revan's master was a woman named Kreia. What? <laughs> it's just like. Well, Kreia, Kreia, really? and Kreia. Wasn't I Kreia, really well, Kreia was the, the version of her when she was light side, right? Or am I getting that mixed up? Kreia is Sith. Because Kreia is the Sith. Okay. Yeah. 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 Kreia was the betrayer. The, yeah, yeah. Be betrayer. That's gotcha. Gotcha. But, um, but just stuff like that. I mean, I can't please. You guys know that you can't please everybody in your videos. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> um, but no. no, it's a it's a bizarre. Like there are. I feel like there's a lot of things that I would, in an ideal world, like to take to YouTube. Um, because I feel like they'd be better suited for like a 10 minute format type thing. Uh, but I don't know how to edit videos. I don't have a camera for that. I don't even know where I would start. So so what do you do with your TikToks? Do you just do like static images or what is that? So it, it's, it is video clips. I mean, it's just- It's just easier to, through their- bring it up on screen? Through their thing or whatever? Sure. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. It's just me talking really fast. Uh, do not pick a British one, please. <laughs> a British one? Did you do a fake yes, British accent? I was British for eight months on the platform what yes what does that mean so you just faked it you faked well it. so i started you know, way back before i ever thought i was i i didn't even want to make star wars content i made a video i did like at the time my star wars rankings which i don't do anymore um and that blew up on the wrong side of tiktok and i started getting you know death threats and all these kinds of horrible things if you i'm not getting death me. threats i'm getting unsolicited images from men um so i was like i you get you get those all the time what do you mean am i not cute enough for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you saw the comment a minute ago that it... <laughs> i'm just i'm just i'm just kidding but no you all spell the your TikTok again uh s-a-w-y-e-u-r-i-s-m Yo, I need to get on TikTok. I'm feeling <laughs> real boomerish. Um, but yeah, no, I get them a lot, especially after my live streams. Like every time I do a live stream, I'll have like 10 uh, messages like the waiting fuck? for me. I mean, I don't even get that many after our streams. Um, and I feel yeah. left out. I don't get any of those. I'll be happy to forward them to you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm okay. Yo, we are good. On that. <laughs> All right. But that must uh, be difficult. Like, I know, you know, I, I, I get a lot of whatever on my side because I have, uh, a, I guess, a sizable uh, amount of people that tune in or don't tune in. Um, but I don't really think what it must be like for a girl. 
to be a content creator because oh it's like God. you don't you don't have to deal with the stuff we well you probably have to deal with the stuff that we have to deal with but mm -hmm. you deal with of it, on top story. of it it's like you're getting weird it's stuff interesting um a large part of why i was british for a long time um but because i thought that was like protecting myself i don't really know why but at the time it felt like a good idea um but um yeah no i it's kind of it, it's a pretty even blend of you have no idea what you're talking about which i'm sure you guys get as well um and i think today alone i got three marriage proposals wow. oh nice <laughs> there you know it's real love yeah. here go you can pick up the you can choose the or you could do the Darth Nihilus one, or you could do Cry. Go, go, maybe go to Kraya because. Oh, that's that's kind of cool. So you just kind of talking into the camera. Where? And then. Do um, it. it's the Kraya's. Well, I mean, you can kind of see with her three. Go up. Oh. Right here. Um, yeah, that's that's the Kraya one. I don't think the um, <laughs> sounds on. Is it? Oh, so you do a little green screen. Okay, cool. Let's go. You can see how fast I'm talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you do like a... That's cool. Can you hear yeah. it? I can, but... I cannot, no. Oh, I can. I guess it didn't turn on. Well, That's I'm cool. going to yeah, subscribe so like or whatever. It's like I'm you're doing um, Star Wars YouTube videos, but on TikTok. It's, it's, so it's interesting. It, to me, this is... I feel like a I feel like a boomer right now. That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> I'm out of the loop here. Um, We're too old, bro. Yeah, right? I mean, it's the, I, I, it's very similar to what you guys do. It's just very fast. Um, and on TikTok. Um, but I'm I think it. it's I think I'm going to give it a shot. I, yeah, definitely do. I think it's... Um, I, I think it's it's a really cool way to get because the way that tiktok works is that you know you just scroll up and it gives you recommended videos but it also sometimes gives you videos that you might not have ever clicked on or you know if it, you were on youtube or whatever um and it's just so you know some of you know those hit videos for star wars creators are you know one of my most popular ones that i've done was talking about the the fear this concept of what sith eyes are and you know the idea that they're like a state of being more than like an ability you have. Um, and that blew up because that was interesting to people that weren't just Star Wars fans. Yeah. You know, those are people who watch the movies and were like, no, oh, why were why that guy have yellow eyes for a second? So um, I think it's a great way to introduce new people to the fandom. Yeah. Yeah. Just because no, of the way the algorithm like, works. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like it. I mean, it, I'm kind of just in my head thinking of like, maybe I could talk about different things over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's interesting for sure. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I need to show you guys because uh, I'm I'm still disgusted with what happened. <laughs> oh, it's all good, bro. All right, no, I, no, I, I I hate that. So here's the chat, and then obviously, so the real chat refreshes like every, it just goes real time, but this will jump. Yeah, no, so it does. Say, like, yeah. Stop being. See, see, I don't even know where it went. Stop being toxic. And if chat's going faster, it's yeah. like let's say I want to click on this. And all of a sudden, it's yeah, just it so again. wild that you accidentally hit on that one, but it's Murphy's law. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's what happens. Great. You know what I mean? My so, luck, dude. Hey, it is what it is. No, no, no harm, no foul. You know I take I mean? no offense. Yeah, we're we're Gucci. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you're probably used to <laughs> I, seeing I've way seen, worse. So. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 And now I'm gonna be a big TikTok star. Hell yeah, dude! Let's we'll go. Support Welcome to the community. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Oh god. Well, I feel like this this I love this new segment, Josh. Yeah, I'm no, this was a great it. stream, brother. This was really good and three and uh, a half, three hours forty minutes, dude. Yeah, and I feel good, bro. Like you know, I feel good. I don't feel tired. I feel yeah. like I can like bring on more people, but it, yeah. it should probably end it. Yeah, no, but we should do an, uh, this again. And even if we Next don't do week, this every yeah. week, but we should do this often. You know what I, I mean? I find that my podcasts, like not this caliber, but the ones that are like purely conversational and you don't have a plan always turn out to be the best yeah we never have a plan yeah <laughs> very rarely i think we talked about our lack of plan earlier that's about all the plans we had we were like yeah what's going on there? We, like, oh. <laughs> no plan whatsoever yeah. Ever. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, um, thank you so much for letting me come on and talk to you guys. Of course. Um, you want to come on next week? Uh, yeah, actually, I would love to. Okay, cool. And then we should get like a panel sometime eventually, like just with That'd like be great. Be like you, me, Dark Chaco. Uh, I don't know. Then other people in there that are like think completely differently. And I, it'd be cool. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, be a good debate. Give me the details. I'll I'll be there. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next week. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. Have a good night, guys. It's good to meet you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, take care. Woo. We did That's it. cool, man. Yeah. That was great, man. That was dope. That was great. I feel like we've taken our first steps into a larger world. I really feel like we have. I feel like, um, I don't know. Like, I just feel, feel good. I feel good. I feel like we, I feel like we had some good combos. It's a combos. different feeling tonight. Yeah, definitely a different feeling. I feel like these combos are needed. Yeah, man. Yep. Chat, you still with us? Yeah, how you guys feeling doing? It? Not feeling it. I know there were some people being buttholes, but that's to be expected, right? What were they saying? I didn't really see any buttholes. I saw a few, but I, I you know, it is about what? It is. Just I think certain people don't like other people's opinions, and uh, they like being little buttholes behind a keyboard. You know, not everybody. I feel like we've got some a lot of good peeps in here, but I feel like there were a few people, uh, you know, just doing their thing. Hmm. Okay. Feel oh, good. I feel very cleansed. Me too, brother. You know, me too. It's nice, and and I know you and I we we get on here and we talk, and it's often uh, just ah this that I hate this I hate that and blah mm -hmm. blah blah. Mm -hmm. Um, hold up, let me try to get someone right now. <laughs> You guys are the spark that will burn the haters. You're the, the the spark that will light the fire that will haters that will burn light the, the light the fires and kick the tires. Josh, say something. Uh, no, my bad. <laughs> my bad. I was checking the Discord. Peeps were we were talking about talking about the uh, little awkward situation. I just, I just messaged Cat to come in, so she's uh, she's definitely confirmed for next week. Cool. Um, she definitely wants to be in here for next week, so that's cool. Dope. Yeah, yeah. I even told her about making her a regular. That'd be great. We'll see. We'll see if. Uh, yeah. I love cool. hearing different people's perspectives and honestly like I consider myself sort of a conversationalist so like I love hearing other thoughts and you know sometimes it'll spark something in me that I don't think I would have got otherwise you know yeah it's good stuff bro it's great dude <laughs> <laughs> no. oh jeez Uh, that would be kind of funny though cool Yo, yeah I mean, do I'd, I'd love to have other content creators on here i think that for sure fun. and maybe after people hear about this or even watch some of the stream they'll be a little bit more open to it you know what i mean mm. we're not trying to be buttholes here man you know yep cat lasalle yeah we'll see if she'll uh she'll come in or not she replied she was like very excited to be here for next week nice man I just told her you should come in right now. Say hi. See what she says. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think this is much needed. I think it's important to be able to talk about our differences uh, respectfully. And I think it's uh, it's a nice way to show that, you know, you don't have to hate each other if right, you don't dude. like this or that. And I think that's, you know, a big thing that's going on right now is that. And I think, you know, a lot of people throw me into... A certain box because I don't like the sequels and they think that I should um, that I that I mean that everyone who does who likes the sequels is you know a piece of doo doo and I don't think that as we can plainly see yeah so I hope this has enlightened you more about me I hope it enlightens you more about the different thoughts out there um 
and perspectives and yeah yeah man. that's that that I is nobody leak that. yes it did yeah we talked a little bit about it yeah i did josh how you feeling bro i'm feeling good brother feeling good i go get a little bit of food and call it yeah. a night you know i was in this new place streaming tonight felt like it went pretty well so uh probably gonna yeah, you want to talk about your story a little bit? You've been, you've been going I mean, it was just time. crazy, man. Like last week I moved everybody and I thought, if you remember last week, I was like, you guys didn't notice, but for me, I couldn't see or hear theory a lot. Like it kept glitching out. And then I found out that the internet in the spot I was just, that I just moved to is horrible. And I couldn't get fiber in like I was told that I could get fiber in. So I was like panicking. I thought I might have to move. Um, and so, yeah, this facility here was nice enough to let me come in here and stream tonight. I think I'm going to work out an arrangement with them to try to continue to come in here and, and stream. And I think we're going to be okay, but it was pretty, uh, it was pretty scary. You know, thought I was making a really smart move. Then all of a sudden, did I make the worst move ever? You know? So, yeah, I think it'll work itself out eventually. I mean, yeah. 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 Just I mean, and, and honestly, I met a lot of cool people trying to solve the problem that I think I'm going to be able to do business with moving forward. So there's always a silver lining if you can just keep it going, you know, and just keep it moving and mitigate your loss and look for the opportunity, you know? Daft Punk next week. That'd be great. That'd be sick, dude. I'm a fan. Papa Theory, Star Wars, Santa, please. What? Star Wars Santa was fun. Oh, yeah, he was dope. Yeah. Get Kathleen Queen on. Who's that? Who that? Who that? Get Sam Jackson on. Now that would be a fire stream. That'd be sick, dude. Dude. That Where's that fire? Uh, Is that a comment somewhere? Yeah. Uh, it's already gone. It's already gone. There she be. There is a Disney shield. I thought I was a I thought I was a hater. Yeah, you got to make up a, your sign. You got to make up your mind, man. I know. I can't figure it out. Jeez, flip flopping. Josh six pack next week. Hey, look. Nah. <laughs> Maybe someday. We're doing a calendar. Check out the Denner's Discord. <laughs> All the proceeds go to. Uh, I don't know, TikTokers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, Star Wars Santa's up to 643. Dope, man. That's incredible. What was he at? He was at 200, bro. That's dope. That's awesome, man. He's probably having a great... He's Bro, he's probably... I know how much he likes oh, yeah, your stuff, dude. man. I know how much he likes your stuff. And I know how much he likes... I mean, this was probably just a really sweet night for him. But I can talk about this if you want to. Yeah, go for it. So it's in, uh, I think, one of the best... Yeah, one of the best books that talks about it. Oh, oh man, I want to say it was either How Star Wars Conquered the Universe or one of those such books. It's one of the books that really talks extensively about the real story of George and Star Wars because, look, I love Empire of Dreams, but Empire of Dreams is practically a George Lucas propaganda film. Like, it's it's not really what happened. You know what I mean? It's what George wanted people to think happened. It's fine. I don't really necessarily hold it against him that much. But similarly, what happened with Natalie and George and the writing around Attack of the Clones, there's a there's a there's a dark story there. You know what I mean? They did not get along, bro. You know, and from that manifested a lot of problems that then became script problems, rewrites, et cetera, et cetera. So interesting i didn't know that yeah i mean i might even look into it maybe do a video on it it seems like people might be interested in it so maybe i'll do a little vid on it but yeah it's a it's a pretty interesting aspect of that character because yeah, look i'd love if you did a video on it yeah i mean I george, it should have been it should have been better you know and maybe george was a little petty there i would have loved to have seen her be a little more uh confrontational yep 100 percent Oh man, she's so tough in Phantom Menace. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and in Attack Clone of the Clones, Wars. Attack of the Oh, in Clone Wars for sure. Attack, Attack of the, of the Clones, Clones. She's, she's tougher than oh, Anakin. Oh man, at the end of that scene, man, she's she's, she's got yeah. Annie, you know, in her hands like putty, man. She's yep, just... yep. She had it going. Well, I think that's the show. Um, it was a very enlightening show, yeah, I guess. Yeah, good show. Um, 
Thank you, Mitchell Ryan. Uh, he says you are a butthole. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nice, it. dude. Nice. Um, yeah, to everyone who came on, we respect you all. We love you, and we really appreciate your time and your input. And uh, you taught me some things, and uh, I hope that you know I taught you some things too, or I showed you a different view, um, a different point of view. And yeah, man, absolutely. I respect your respect all your different point of views so with that we will leave you guys and we'll see you next week with cat lasalle she'll be joining us you can follow her on uh, she played padme in the in in my fan film so that'll be fun and that'll then we'll awesome. have more people come in uh i don't know if we'll do that should we do that next week too i think we should absolutely do it next week and then maybe we think about a sketch you know what i mean maybe every other week or something and yeah yeah I don't think we should rebrand the show and call it something. No, like, no, no, no. But maybe, there. yeah. And honestly, even if we just every, maybe every other week, we want to commit to a longer stream and do it in the back half or something. Maybe that's the, the move. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. People are saying bye, Josh. See you guys. Much love. Much love. Maybe a little too much love. It ain't an outro unless... And you're sounding like a separatist.